Hello and welcome to another video from me, another tarot reading. So today's topic is going to be on what is your future spouse's physical appearance. I know I have done this before and you can sure search for the previous videos that I have done on this topic and similar topics, but I always get new messages, so why not? So I'm going to make this a nice and long reading as well, and I'm going to be looking at pretty much every insight I can get from cards, from charms, from astrological notes, astrological cards, from Aphrodite, you know, everything I can get my hands on. So yeah, I'm not going to hold anything back. So this is for those of you, um, oh, before I go go on, I want to mention, of course, that if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe if you have found value in any reading, because I have checked the analytics and over 80% of the people who are regularly watching my videos are not subscribed. So yes, please take a second to subscribe. It will only take a second and it is free and it's the easiest way, sorry, to support me. And also consider clicking the notifications bell if you want to see when I will post a new tarot reading. Um, yeah, and as usual, I have chosen these crystals intuitively and I have asked the question of basically spirit, which crystals should I use from my collection for this particular topic? And these are the crystals that I felt drawn to in this particular order. So the first one is this purple agate. So pile number one, this is your option, the purple agate. All right. Pile number two, you have this, um, to be honest, I'm not even sure what it is, uh, ruby zoocyte or something else. I think it's ruby zoocyte. It could be something else, to be honest. But any case, in any case, this is your crystal pile number two. And pile number three, you have this rhodochrosite crystal. Whoops. Okay. So this is your option pile number three. So you can pause the video if you need more time to decide. Once again, my recommendation is you take some deep breaths, exhale longer than you inhale. That will help center you and calm you down. Meditate upon the question for a little bit with your eyes closed and then open your eyes after maybe you have addressed it to a higher power as well, um, like God or whoever you worship, and choose the first crystal that stands out to you intuitively without overthinking it. And of course, if you feel drawn to more than one pile, you are free to watch several or even all of them and just see whichever messages resonate. Thank you very much and for choosing another video from me and also don't forget to subscribe and I will see you at your reading. All right, so this is for those of you who would like to select with a crystal and a card. This is going to be the selection for the card. Let me get into it. Spirit, tell me about pile number one. What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Spirit, pile number two, pile number three, spirit, the Roto Pro side. What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Okay, so pile number one, you have the moon, the moon card. Pile number two, you have the six of swords card. Pile number three. You have the Emperor card. Okay. So I'm going to try to zoom in. I am not going to try. I have successfully zoomed in. So let me try to see if I can if I can work on the lighting a little bit. I think this is the best I can do. Um, all right. So. Okay. So, this is for those of you who would like to choose with a card as well as a crystal. Once again, pile number one, you have this purple agate crystal. Here it is. So, pile number one, you have the purple agate or the moon card. 
pile number two you have this card with six of swords and or um all right i just realized i don't think i said initially that this is ruby and zoyasite but i think it's unikite i think it's unikite i just it came to me right now yeah most likely i don't think it's ruby and zoyasite in any case pile number two this is your crystal okay and yeah the six of swords and pile number three you have the emperor card and or this rhodochrosite crystal yep okay so these are your options once again pile number one number two number three you can pause the video if you need more time to decide trying to get it to i don't know trying to to focus them a little bit but i think yeah this is the best i can do if i don't mess it up even further um yeah, that's that's it. So yeah, you can pause the video if you need more time to decide to meditate upon the question. As usual, my recommendation is you take some time to think about it, maybe address it to a higher power. You can also modify the question a little bit, but in such a way that you could get relevant answers through the question that I'm going to ask. Um, and it helps if you take some deep breaths, exhale longer than you inhale. That will help center you and calm you down, help your mind relax. Let your mind basically go blank as much as possible and then open your eyes and choose the first pile that stands out to you intuitively without overthinking it. And if you feel drawn to more than one pile, you are free to watch several or even all of them and just take whichever messages resonate. Before I sign off, I will ask you once again to please subscribe to my channel if you have found value in any of my readings. It will only take a second and it is free and it's the easiest way to support me. And also consider clicking the notifications bell if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. So thank you and I will see you at your reading. So welcome pile number one. This is your reading if you have chosen the purple agate and or this um, card, which is the moon card. So this is going to be the card selection phase. I will add timestamps because I will take my time selecting. Okay, uh, let me see if I can arrange stuff a little bit better. I think this is a better arrangement. It's a lot more like pagan. Okay, so let me see. Spirit, what can you tell me? Well, actually, wait gonna choose some oracle cards first spirit what can you tell me for pile number one who is this person's future spouse what is the future spouse's physical appearance tell me spirit what can you tell me about the future spouse's physical appearance okay spirit what can you tell me for pile number one's future spouse's physical appearance Tell me, spirit, show me. So we have peace. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to leave them here and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to read them at the end. So we have peace. We have you, number 32. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, number 32 with you. And we have personal choice. Okay, so again, I'm going to read the description for these when I get to the end. White Stag Protector. Dragon Supernatural. Okay, so I'm going to add this here. All right, Spirit, tell me about pile number one. What is their future spouse's physical appearance? What is their future spouse's physical appearance for pile number one? What is pile number one's future spouse's physical appearance, Spirit?
So let's see. King of Swords. Nine of Wands. Nine of Swords. Oops. The Devil. Oh, okay. The Wheel of Fortune. The World. The Ten of Wands. Wait. The Judgment card. The Nine of Cups. So many nines. The Eight of Swords. The Empress. And the Moon card again. Because we have the original card being the Moon. Ha! Pile number one. Okay, so I'm going to start by reading um, the oracle cards. I have changed my format a little bit since my last reading, but I'm going to be doing the oracle cards before the actual reading. So you got the oracle card of peace here with the Madonna and the baby here. Um, wait, let me show it to you. Here we have it. And then we have this card number 32, which is the number ruled by Mercury. It boils down to five and we have you. And we have personal choice. Close your eyes. What animal do you imagine? What strengths are they known for? What wisdom do they share? Embrace these qualities. And we have white stag protector. You are an old soul. Your best friend is nature. Use your intuition to take you where you want to go. Awaken to the powerful force within you. You are meant to create blessings with your magic. And we also have dragon supernatural here. With you are the ancient wise sage, you can shape shift at will. Mastery is your destiny, rise with dignity. So, this is on top of having the moon card coming out twice. So, the initial card that you had was this one with the moon. See, it says right there the moon. And then you also had the moon coming out again. So, Clearly, there's a very strong repeated message that this is someone who has a very sharp intuition, who could be an old soul. Um, but in any case, this is someone who has a very um, strong emotional intelligence, a lot of wisdom. Um, it gives me a feeling of still waters run deep, really. So, yeah, this is like general energy. I promise I'm going to get two actual physical characteristics as I go along. But in any case, with the moon coming out strongly, and then you also have the empress coming out here, and you also have the devil, right off the bat, I can tell you this person is definitely going to be well above average attractive. This is probably the kind of person that a lot of people find attractive, quite frankly. Um, the devil definitely shows this person has a lot of sex appeal, and a lot of people probably see them as a temptation. And it could potentially also show that there is maybe something about them that is a bit mysterious, a bit even dangerous, maybe. Um, again, as I go along with the astrological notes, I wouldn't be surprised to see placements. I wouldn't be surprised, sorry, to um, also pick the energy of Ardra, maybe, or Purvabhadrapada, maybe a bit of Jyeshta or Anuradha as well, because we have the white stag but again this is for those of you who come from vedic astrology and you are more familiar with these terms uh, but i will be explaining as i go along when i get to that phase in any case yeah right off the bat this person is attractive so <laughs> um it's also interesting to me mm, that there are repeated messages of parenthood here because we have this one with the Madonna and the baby and a lamb here also. Because we have the lamb, this person could also maybe have placements in Pushya or Kritika Nakshatras. And um, yeah, but again, I'm going to get more to physical details of what this means as I go to the end to the astrological notes. And in any case, this is a person that comes across as nurturing. And there could be also an energy about them that seems very protective and giving and, you know... Like, a lot of people could see them as kind of a safe haven. So something about their appearance just, you know, comes across as, you know, um, relaxing and trustworthy and 
calming somehow. Maybe this is a person who also is good with kids. And um, yeah, with the, uh, the actual messages about parenthood here, it could be that this person is actually a parent, but doesn't have to be the case again. Or they look like they could make a good parent. That's another thing. So if this uh, ir actually irrespective of their gender, they come across as someone who could have very strong, nurturing, protective qualities because of this moon energy as well. There might also be something about them that is quite feminine. So if this is a man, uh, most likely this person has a very pretty face. So again, it could be that they have some features that come across as almost feminine sometimes. So with the moon energy coming out strongly, they could have a wide face, um, fair complexion. But again, fair complexion is to be taken within the limits of genetic inheritance. This could just be that they are, let's say, towards the fair spectrum of their family lineage right so yeah like they're the less tanned of their family for instance um yeah but in general this moon energy will tend to give a fair complexion things like pale skin light colored eyes um light colored hair but again it is within the limits of their genetic inheritance in any case whether they're fair actual fair or not this person will have features that just show a bit of softness so they could have like for instance wide cheeks and there could be even a touch of plumpness about them maybe around the face especially they could tend to have a wide roundish face um they could also tend to have like a pretty strong jaw and in most cases this could also show um full lips but in most cases it does depend of course a lot and this is reading for a lot of people so i'm also going to see what comes through with the astrological notes because those are going to be more on point but yeah pretty much this is the energy that i get and also oh the moon rules the chest and the stomach area so these areas could be particularly standing out about this person like maybe they have a very attractive chest and or stomach area these areas could be really developed, you know, especially in a woman. This could show that the breast area is particularly attractive. Um, aside from that, there could be something about them that just makes them look really dreamy and romantic, you know. So there's like a touch of softness and romance about this person. They could also come across as quite poetic, artistic. And overall, um, this could be a person who is quite introverted at least at first sight because there isn't a lot of energy that shows um how should I put it like a lot of loud energy here necessarily I'm not getting that um I'm not saying that this person can't be loud but I don't think it's their default mode I think this person can actually come across as um a bit of the strong silent type or just a very mysterious type yeah, we do have a lot of number nines coming out. I also look at numerology. So this shows a lot of Mars energy. This could be a person who maybe has a lot of, um, also a lot of Mars energy. So that could be placements in Aries, in Scorpio, or the nakshatras, which are ruled by Mars, which are um, Mrigashira, Danishta, and Chitra, could be. Candle, candle just blew out. Um, could be that, or it could also be that maybe this person has a Mars in the ascendant or maybe conjunct the sun or the moon or aspecting the sun or the moon. So in any case, there could be a lot of strong Mars energy as well, which would tend to show also, um, a lot of traditionally masculine features. So again, this person could have like a mix of, a mix of both, but I'm guessing, especially with respect to their face, I think that this is someone who has a lot of those features that I talked about. They could have like round eyes, for instance, or wide eyes, or like at least something about their facial features shows like a kind of softness and kindness and stuff. Um, but with the Mars energy, they could also, for instance, have an intense um, stare. They could have an oval face. They could have strong teeth, a nice smile. Um, they could also have like a pretty prominent jawline, a prominent nose. And they could also sometimes have like small eyes, especially hooded eyes. But again, I'm going to get more details as I go along with respect to this. With the world card here, 
this person could be coming from a different culture, cultural background than you. So this could be someone who's literally from a different part of the world, like born in a different um, country. But most likely this actually, even if you're born in different countries, I don't think this is someone who comes from exactly the same ethnic background. So with the world card, this could show that this person is somehow exotic, right? So they, you could be actually from the same city or the same country, but you come from maybe slightly different cultural backgrounds, ethnicities, maybe different races. Um, it could be a difference in religion. Or at the very least, it could be just that this person is someone who likes to travel. So something about them maybe in the way that they present themselves or their overall energy um, says that they like to travel, that they have traveled a lot. Um, you know, someone who's a bit of a globetrotter who likes to be on the move a lot. Also with the number nine coming out as much, it does show that this person just likes to stay active in general. So again, with the Mars energy, this could also be someone who likes to stay active as in going to the gym, they could have well-developed muscle mass as well. And with the King of Swords, King of Swords is Aquarius energy. So this person, and also the world kind of makes me think of Aquarius. I wouldn't be surprised if I got some Rahu energy as I go along as well, because Rahu is the main signifier of uh, foreign culture influence. So in any case, I think this person comes across as exotic and unusual. That's another thing. With Aquarius, they could also have an energy energy about them that is very rational, um, analytical. They could even be, depending on the situation, but they could be someone who's borderline genius. Like they come across as very independent and um, kind of like marching to the beat of their own drum. See, we do have some Scorpio 8th house energy as well, with the Wheel of Fortune as well. So this person is someone who, um, again, not directly linked to their physical appearance, but it could transpire into their physical appearance. They're someone who comes across as someone who has gone through the school of hard knocks, you know, someone who has gone through a lot of ups and downs, a lot of challenges. They definitely look like someone who is potentially intense and can handle crisis situations. For some of you, this could even mean like um, some kind of connection to maybe police or defense or something like that. This person also comes across as potentially anxious sometimes. So overall, I'm getting a pretty agitated energy here. The moon is also an energy that actually, despite the softness and the water energy, it's, it's a moon that, sorry, it's an energy that shows waxing and waning. So it can be a kind of inconstancy thing going on. Um, with the Judgment card, this could also be a person who, again, it kind of reinforces the King of Swords. They come across as someone who's very discerning, very maybe critical sometimes. But again, not directly linked to physical appearance. So I'm giving you everything that I see here. So it goes beyond physical appearance. This can also just uh, come across as someone who... Um, is pretty career driven and hardworking and they could look like someone who is under a lot of pressure and has a lot of responsibilities like they could be shouldering a lot of responsibilities and sometimes they might feel isolated in the amount of work that they have to do we do have some saturn energy here as well because of the because of all of the messages that came through actually But I feel like overall, and here with the U card, actually, it could be that for some of you, this person might have some features that are similar to yours, but this is really specific and definitely not for everyone. Like you could be, and, and maybe even if they don't have like actual physical features, somehow they ma they mirror you in mannerisms, for instance, or um maybe interest as well but i'm guessing with respect to physical appearance and or physical presentation you could be mirroring one another so yeah <laughs> um okay so this is pretty much what i see let me see what else i can get 
yeah, overall, the message here is, see, here's the thing, though, that I will say about this person, which, again, is not <clears throat> directly linked to physical appearance, but I think it's relevant. This person has massive intuition. They're very wise, and they have a very brilliant mind, but they may not be particularly trusting of intuition, and they could be, like, stuck in a kind of analysis paralysis. So, yeah, they could be someone who is thinking a lot, like, you know, they are, they could be hyper rational and don't really trust their intuition, even though their intuition is very strong. And uh, with the moon card, it could just be like I said, so this person looks like somehow they're lost in thought a lot, you know, like they're very dreamy. Um, they could also come across as romantic, but sometimes they can come across as a bit aloof and maybe absent minded. So, yeah, this is pretty much what I can see through the cards. Let me get some astrological cards, actually. Spirit, tell me about bio number one. What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Okay, these ones really want to come out. So what is their future spouse's physical appearance, Spirit, for bio number one? One more. One more. Tell me, Spirit. Okay, these two. These two want to come out, so... So let's see, we have Chiron, okay, inner healing. This is similar to Sata Bishak Nakshatra as well, if you come from, uh, oh my god. <laughs> this is a very strong confirmation of the moon energy because moon rules cancer. So yeah, we have cancer, we have conjunction. All right, so I feel like for some of you, this person maybe has a moon-mars conjunction. But they could also just maybe have a lot of conjunctions. The conjunction, in any case, can show intensity and, like, this person is really driven. And we have Venus, yeah? So this is a very strong confirmation of the beauty and the sensuality. So this person definitely is sexy. They, oh my god, <laughs> Pluto, shadow and mysticism. So Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio in um, tropical astrology. So here we have that Scorpio energy, that intensity and we have third house communication and interaction. So that's a bit of Gemini energy. Okay. So definitely physical attractiveness is there. There's a very strong confirmation. And again, irrespective of gender, this person has a lot of feminine energy. Because we have Venus, we have the moon energy. So yeah, this person is very, uh, very much in touch with their feminine energy. They could have a touch of sensuality. There could be something slow about them. Maybe the way that they move. Maybe they come across as like smooth uh, in their movements. They could also have a very nice voice. Singing voice, speaking voice. The Venus energy is also... Um, both the moon and Venus kind of connect to the face. So again, this person's face is standing out. Their facial features are very pretty. It could be that especially their eyes, their skin, their smile... Their hair could also be really nice. And, um, yeah. And they will tend to have, like, a... I mean, for some of you, it could be oval face. For others, it could be more of a wide, roundish face. With the Chiron energy, see, this kind of backs up what I saw through the Nine of Swords. This person could ha look um, a bit worried sometimes. They could look worried or maybe brooding you know so there could be like an energy an aura of emotional heaviness about them with the third house though there's also this energy of agitation so this is someone who's fast moving fast talking maybe a lot so they could be someone who like has a lot of errands to run and the third house is also independent so this could be someone who's self-employed or they work in some kind of line of work where communication is very important and the third house last but not least when you're looking at it from a strictly physical perspective, shows the arms and the hands. So the arms and the hands could stand out about this person. Maybe they gesticulate a lot when they're talking. Or maybe they are in some kind of line of work or they have interests where they use their hands and their arms a lot, like playing an instrument. I don't know. Maybe even like any kind of any kind of computer job, like any kind of job where you have to type a lot is also third house. Yeah, <laughs> and their speech is also very important. Maybe they're very gifted speakers, you know, so yeah, verbally. Maybe they talk a lot as well, too. A bit of Gemini energy as well. Okay, so this is what I get through the cards, and I'm going to get some astrological notes now. All right, so this is a Ziploc bag, yes. <laughs> I have traveled back from my from the place that I was staying at. 
from a different continent and I took my my temporary notes with me about Nakshatra. So Spirit, tell me about pile number one's person. What is this person's physical appearance? <sighs> okay. Spirit, what's pile number one person's physical appearance? Okay, nothing wants to come out. Doesn't feel right. Okay. So we do have a few here. Let me get some more. Spirit, what can you tell me for pile number one's person? Okay, this one. What does pile number one's person look like? What are their physical characteristics? Tell me, spirit. Okay, I think that's enough. That is more than enough. Let's see, we have, oh, wow, Ardra Nakshatra. Okay, so Ardra Nakshatra falls in Gemini. I did mention that I wouldn't be surprised if I got this Nakshatra. So yeah, this person definitely is intense. Here we have Mriga Shira, which I said is ruled by Mars. So, and we also have a significant Taurus and Gemini energy. We have Uttara Ashadha, which is ruled by the Sun. And we have Ashwini, which falls in Aries, is ruled by Ketu. So K2 is uh, the south node of the moon, and it is very much connected to spirituality. Basically, it's even more connected to intuition than the moon. Everything paranormal and supernatural is basically connected to K2. Here we have Chitra, which is ruled by Mars again. So a lot of confirmation that this person also has a lot of Mars energy. And we have Barani. Oh my god, there we have the brooding energy, which is ruled by Venus. Okay. We have Ashwini twice. So Ashwini could be particularly strong, maybe in your horoscope or their horoscope. Purva Falguni, which is ruled by Venus again. So we have two of the three Venus ruled nakshatras. We have Revati falling in Pisces, ruled by Mercury. Um, we have Swati, which is ruled by Rahu, falls in Libra. So we do have the Rahu going on as well. Here we have Pushya, so confirmation of what I said initially. Okay, Pushya energy. Let's see. We have Rohini. Okay, oh wow, ruled by the moon. So this explains the all of the beauty markers that came through. This person has a very pretty face, definitely. And with Rohini, especially the eyes could be standing out. Uh, Rohini and Revati actually show... Oh my god, we have Danishta as well. So we have all of the three Mars ruled nakshatras. Very strong confirmation that this person has a strong Mars energy. And we have Vishaka, which is ruled by Jupiter and falls in Libra and Scorpio. Okay, let's see what else we have. Um, we have the sun. So the sun is coming out as well with respect to physical appearance. So this enforces like protective energy, masculine energy as well. We have Capricorn, so there's the Saturn energy. We have Leo, so more of the sun energy. Yeah, well, and we have the moon for the third time as a signifier. Yes. Whoops. And we have Libra. Okay. So considering all of these signifiers over here... What else I can tell you? Well, definitely with the Ardra energy, this person is really intense. They could be someone who has um, very intense emotions. Highs and lows are felt strongly by this person. What I can also tell you is that most likely they hide their sensitivity under a straight face, uh, under a poker face, let me put it like that. So they can be very good at coming across as pretty calm and collected on the surface but they're someone who has really intense emotions. This is also a person who probably really likes nature. They could like animals a lot. Maybe they like to keep pets. Um, they probably love forests or they feel at home in a forest um, because of the Ardra and Rigashira energy. They're connected to forests. There's also potentially a kind of childlike energy about this person, a kind of youthfulness in their energy as well. Like, sometimes they could have, like, a kind of mischievous, maybe a smile or something. And it's like they go back and forth between having a really good poker face and then being really expressive to the point where anyone can read their emotions, like, and wearing their hearts on their sleeves, you know. With Chitra, with Barani and a lot of these 
energies with Purva Falguni. Um, there's this person is definitely, like I said, very attractive, above average attractive, and a lot of people notice them. They they could have like an aura of sensuality. There's a lot of Taurus energy here as well. So they could portray themselves in such a way, um, maybe through the way that they walk, the way they talk, or their um, fashion sense. They come across as someone who just likes the finer things in life. They enjoy physical pleasures. They can have a hedonistic side. Um, they do like comfort, right? With Raverty, we have that confirmation of the world energy in the sense that they probably like to travel. Um, very specifically, they could be really interested in um, air travel. Maybe for some of you, this person is could like could be involved in air travel, but again, that's more specific and not for everyone. We have Ashwini coming out twice. So this person definitely comes across as pretty masculine, and they do have an air about them that is um, very difficult to read. They have a kind of um, a difficult to read, intense energy, but also they come across as good leaders. This is really specific, but with the Ashwini energy, they could be someone who likes horses, maybe likes horseback riding. And again, the Ashwini energy is kind of a confirmation that they could come across as pale. Um, like physically, they could tend towards pale features. And... Um, with um, the sun energy coming out quite strongly, so we again, I, you know, there is a strong confirmation of that parental energy because the sun is the father archetype and the moon is the mother archetype. So, but I'm definitely getting that this person, like this person's feminine energy, comes through almost stronger than the masculine. So, irrespective of their gender, they could just be like a really gentle person, like someone who's capable of a lot of patience and nurturing and understanding. But then they also have like a pretty tough side, no doubt. With all the Mars energy, um, this is someone who knows how to go after what they want. And the physical characteristics of all the Mars and Sun energy generally show through having like a strong jawline, um, sometimes having small eyes, and usually having a prominent nose, a face that tends towards an oval but sometimes can be wide, really. Um, and generally, you know, features that just show basically a strong character and a kind of a go-getter energy, you know, someone who's quite, um, someone who basically stands out in a crowd, especially with the Leo energy and the sun. And also both the moon and the sun energy and, and the Leo tend to show, um, fair complexion, mostly. With Capricorn, again, this person can also have features that are, so they could have like a mix of features that on the one hand can be seen as feminine, and on the other hand could come across as pretty sharp and maybe even cold. So things like having a really, let's say, a bony nose, a prominent, um, prominent hollow cheekbones, like maybe even hollow cheekbones, they could also have something about their appearance that looks very conservative and stern and self-controlled. And um, also a tendency towards melancholy. With Barani energy, I have mentioned this in other videos, I always think of some of the actors who have prominent Barani, which include, um, what's his name? I keep, I keep feeling like calling him Pablo Escobar, but it's not Escobar. It's Pablo something. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot his name again. The guy who acted in, um, in um, The Last of Us. You know who he is. I don't know. He also acted in um, in Game of Thrones. Anyway, he's Pablo something. Um, he has like prominent Barony. Antonio Banderas also has prom prominent Barony. Halle Berry has prominent Barony. Um, Vivian Lee had prominent Barony. Let me think. Um, I think uh, uh, Christina Aguilera also has a prominent Barney, and Lana Del Rey definitely also has prominent Barney. So Barney energy is very kind of, there, there's like a heaviness connected to it. So these people could have an energy about them that is kind of brooding. So they're going to also have facial features and physical features that show a kind of heaviness. So physically, again, they could tend towards a bigger size, like there could be something about them, like either through height or through their body build that shows 
heaviness, like a sturdiness. And also, um, with respect to their facial features, they could have like eyes that show melancholy, like maybe they have slightly downward sloping eyes, or just like the expression of the eyes can come across as pretty sad or like somehow, yeah, lost in thought, maybe a little bit melancholic. Um, but there's also a lot of sensuality connected to their energy as well. You know, all of the Venus energies are very sensuous. With Purva Falguni, this person could have a beauty spot, a beauty mark on their face. Also could show nice hair. And basically, Purva Falguni is also known as the sign of the courtesan. So uh, it's very much known for their sensuality. And a lot of famous um, sex symbols basically have had a lot of heavy Purva Falguni. I can mention um, Charlize Throne, for instance. I can mention Madonna, who has a very strong Purva Falguni. Um, also, Marilyn Monroe had Boone and Purva Falguni in the Navamsha chart. And also, if you notice, a lot of these women who basically ha are um, known to have like sexy beauty spots also tend to have a lot of Purva Falguni energy. So, yeah, that kind of energy could show off. And um, when it comes to men, for instance, Michael Fassbender has Purva Falguni energy. And I, I used to know more, but I don't remember right now. So, also, we have a lot of the Mars energy. So, generally, Mars nakshatra men are very attractive to women. Um, for instance, Danishta, James McAvoy has a lot of Danishta. Um, also, what is his name? The guy who played Mulder in X-Files, David Duchovny. He also has Moon and Danisha. In fact, both David Duchovny and um, the woman who played Scully. I don't remember what her name was. They have Moon and Danisha. Um, also, Marilyn Monroe had Moon and Danisha in her D1 chart. So Danisha is an energy that is very sensuous, again, very sexy. And the physical body especially can really stand out. Um, actually, with all of the Mars nakshatras, Chitra as well, like... Okay, with Chitra, you can actually see a bit of superficiality. These, these people can be very self-conscious about what they come across, especially in Virgo. I mean, actually, in Virgo, they might be a little bit more modest, but they still really care about their physical appearance. And um, yeah, with Chitra, you could see a person who really takes care of themselves, you know, so this person could be very well-groomed, um, likes to wear you know, clothes that make them look put together, like a freshly ironed shirts and stuff. They could also like to wear jewelry. Chitra sometimes is connected to jewelry, any kind of shiny, kind of shiny objects or accessories. So this person could like to wear that. And um, with Swati, again, this could be someone who is quite popular. Again, Swati tends to be very attractive as well. Um, I can't think of anyone right off the bat, but uh, loads of very famous people have Swati Nakshatra energy. Um, I know that, um, what's her name, Taylor Swift has ascendant in Swati Nakshatra. With respect to men, gosh, Richard Dormer has son in Swati, I'm pretty sure. Um, I, maybe he's not the most famous person, but a lot of, again, pretty good looking, attractive, popular actors, especially have a lot of Swati Nakshatra. Uh, you just have to look for it a little bit longer. Um, Vishaka also, this person can have hooded eyes. So Vishaka tends to have a kind of, you know, intense competitive energy about them. Um, Will Smith has Moon and Vishaka. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this. <laughs> but hey, he has his good qualities, right? Um, yeah, Will Smith, Moon and Vishaka. Let me think, who else? Um, again, I can't think of anyone right off the top of my head. I should make a list for each Nakshadra and, and basically just keep it nearby for examples. But yeah, generally men who are actually pretty competitive and intense have a lot of Vishaka. Ooh, another one is Jason Momoa. I'm pretty sure he also has Moon and Vishaka. Yeah, so a lot of men who actually have a lot of like kind of macho energy are Vishaka energy. So again, basically if you're a woman, I yeah, you you have picked a pile that a lot of women like here. So also Uttara Ashadha is notoriously producing a lot of handsome men. I mean, Brad Pitt, George Clooney have Moon and Uttara Ashadha. So again, we have a lot of like repeated themes of, of a broad jawline, a broad face. And Rohini, just everyone who is beautiful of any gender has a lot of Rohini energy. <laughs> I know that Darren Hayes, who happens to be gay, uh, but he the reason I remember I know him 
is because I used to have a massive crush on him when I was a kid, and he has a heavy Rohini. I think he has Mars, Venus conjunct in Rohini. So um, this is the kind of energy that you expect to see with Rohini, like someone who's very talented, who's very beautiful, who, especially with the eye area, the, the eyes are really standing out with Rohini. I know that also Vivian Lee had some strong Rohini energy, significant Rohini energy, let me put it like that, because I did her, a more in-depth analysis of her on my astrology channel, so you might want to look for that if you're curious. Ravati, again, both Rohini and Ravati are known to be very beautiful, especially when it comes to facial features, and especially the eye area. The only difference is that with Ravati, you can see a lot more of the wide set eyes situation. So um, Rihanna, for instance, has Ascendant in Ravati. Um, Tom Hiddleston has Moon in Ravati. Uh, I know that Jared Leto has, I think, Moon in Ravati as well. I'm not sure if it's Moon, but some significant energy. Um... Yeah, so a lot of good-looking people. In any case, you're in really good company over here. And with Pusha, there's a lot of, like, a nurturing uh, sensuality about them as well. So Angelina Jolie has ascended in Pusha, for instance. Um, and um, Kylie Minogue, I think, also has ascended in Pusha. So there's kind of, like, a soft, sensuous energy about Pusha. And with Pusha, you see a lot more of the lush features, like full lips. You know, and also being ruled by Saturn, it can show a very strong, beautiful bone structure. So like high cheekbones, chiseled features, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So overall, you're very lucky here. <laughs> Pile number one. What can I say? And also with all the Libra going on, all the all you have a lot of Venus energy. So Venus is the number one planet that shows physical beauty. So there you have it. So this is pretty much what I can. Oh, wait a minute. Since I'm on this topic, I'm going to gather this stuff and uh, also pick some charms. And I'm also going to roll the Astro Dice for some final astrological confirmations here. So let me see. Spirit, what can you tell me for pile number one? What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Okay, we have Capricorn. We have the number nine okay so number nine could be ninth house but again it could also be just a confirmation of all the number nines that came out so a lot of mars energy and oh what do we have here venus again do you see this what can i say pile, num pile number one i mean you really hit the jackpot over here um this person is very attractive like you're gonna have to deal with a lot of competition probably i don't want to scare you but I mean, I mean, hello, there's a lot of Venus. Also, by the way, can I say Venus is also the planet of wealth. So maybe this person also comes from a wealthy background as well. Yeah, um, yeah, but a lot of Mars energy. And also, if you are to take this as strictly the ninth house, this could show this person has really nice legs, especially thighs. Yeah, thighs and hips could really be attractive. And with the Capricorn, again, we have a reinforcement that there could be something brooding and serious about their um, appearance. And also, um, their bone structure could really stand out. Let's see some charms. Anything you can tell me about pile number one's physical appearance? Pile number one's spouse's physical appearance, Gary, please. Okay, these are just trinkets, so I don't take them super seriously, but just for fun. Okay, so we have a starfish here. For some reason, this makes me think of Ravity as well. So it makes me think of Pisces, but then I could also associate it with just the star energy, which is someone that stands out. Um, but again, makes me think of exotic energy. We also have these things that are made, like there's something Chinese here, but I don't know what they're supposed to represent. There's some kind of uh, writings or something in Chinese. So again, let, let's see if it focuses. Yeah, it's not it's not going to focus. Anyway, um so this just makes me think that this person is coming from exotic areas. So it could be like there's a background difference. We have the hearts here. We have a heart, another heart. The shows, oh my god, it shows mama. <laughs> oh my god, that's such a strong confirmation of the moon. Okay. It's mama. All right. So this person has a very strong 
kind of moon energy, a very nurturing, loving sort of aura about them. So yeah, you're maybe going to call them mama. I don't know. Hopefully not. Um, not <laughs> I mean, hopefully not, but I'm not judging. All right. So this is something that says 1905. Okay. Um, this makes me think, honestly, and again, it kind of looks like... Um, it looks like that key that you you write at the beginning of writing music. So first of all, it to me this is again a confirmation of Saturn energy because it's an old date. So could be someone who is just very classic, maybe conservative, hopefully not a vampire that is actually born in 1905. <laughs> but again, this just hit me right now. It could be someone that you recognize immediately or you have a strong emotional reaction to from the get-go because maybe there's a deja vu feeling about them like you had a past life connection oh my god and the 1905 thing yeah it came out twice and then it also makes me think of music so maybe this person is into music maybe they play an instrument or something maybe they carry a musical instrument or something about them it just seems really artistic Okay, so we have this thing, which kind of makes me think of a Celtic symbol. So this is really specific, but they could be coming from, like, maybe an Irish background or, I mean, Celtic. Oops, sorry about the noise. But Celtic background actually can come from multiple sources, areas, sorry. So it's not just Ireland. Could be, like, northwestern France. Could even be Portugal, because I know the Celts were there. but And, of course, many of the places of the New World that have heavy Celtic energies. Yeah, but this could also just show that this person maybe likes to wear Celtic stuff. Like, maybe they like to wear some kind of Celtic imagery. Or they are wearing a lot of green somehow. Or they could be wearing amulets or things that, you know, have some kind of a significance on a spiritual plane. We have the feather here, which makes me think again of someone who's light on their feet, likes to travel, maybe is very agitated. We have these the scissors here, which again makes me think of someone who's pretty sharp. Um, they could be sharp-tongued as well. And again, we have another heart, which just shows romance. So yeah, this is pretty much what I have through the charms. And I'm going to move to the final segment, which is actual physical characteristics. Be right back. All right. So I apologize for the noise. But something's going down in the city. It's nice to be home. What can I say? For those of you who know that I have been away for about two months. Anyway, um, so the physical characteristics taking the Ziploc bag first. Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number one's future spouse? What is this person's physical appearance? What is pile number one's future spouse's physical appearance, Spirit? Okay. Tell me, Spirit. Pile number one's future spouse's physical appearance. Tell me, Spirit. Nothing? All right. Oh, two of them fell out. Okay. That's all Spirit wants me to take out from the Ziploc bag. Spirit, tell me, what is pile number one's future spouse's physical appearance? What is pile number one's future spouse's physical appearance? All right. So we have active... So this person just has an overall, ooh, intense gaze, okay, confirmation of what I said. Scorpio, Ardra, what can I say? It's all there. Active again, so definitely strong confirmations of what I said already. Melancholic, serious expression, yes. There we have the Barani energy that I was talking about and also the Saturn from the Capricorn. Wow, beauty spot on the face. So for some of you, this person definitely has beauty spots. And we have short to medium height. That's typical for Mars energy. We have light tan skin. We have um, aquiline nose. Okay, so pretty prominent nose. We have younger or youthful. That's a bit of also what I said actually with the Ardra, with the Gemini energy that came through. We have round eyes. Oh my god, really strong confirmations. 
We have tall. Okay, so most likely for some of you, I mean, of course, I'm reading for a lot of people, so you're going to have all kinds of different heights. We have blue or gray eyes. We have triangular or heart-shaped face. We have mischievous smile. So there we have that Gemini energy that I was talking about. We have uniform. So this is a strong confirmation, especially with all that Mars energy. For some of you, this person could be, like I said, I mean, it could be defense or something, or maybe they just work in a place where they have to wear a uniform. We have brown eyes. We have extroverted, okay? We have hazel eyes. So hazel can be both light or dark. It just means like mixed colored eyes. We have dark brown, black hair. Older, more mature. So basically, since we have both youthful and old, um, or, or older, it could just show that there might be a bit of an age gap, but it doesn't have to be the case. We have broad shoulders. All right. So that's kind of a confirmation of what I said with the barony and all the energy that came through. Um, it could be this person has a pretty just, you know, heavy set body or broad body, a sporty style. So that's a confirmation of the energy that came through so far as well. Um, someone who's active. We have medium build, all right? We have curly or wavy hair. We have gray hair. And we have blue or gray eyes again, all right. So for some of you, this person definitely has blue or gray eyes, which is a confirmation of what I said that, you know, we have a lot of tendency towards fairness uh, in complexion and eye color, hair color as well. But we also have dark brown hair. And of course, like I said, since I'm breathing for a lot of people, we're going to have people from all across the board and all different races. So take whatever resonates. So this is what I have for you, pile number one. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, click on the notifications bell if you want to be notified when I post a new tarot reading. Comment in the comment section with anything that resonated, what didn't resonate, what you like, what you may have wanted differently in this reading. And uh, also, if you're interested in becoming a member, as in yeah, in the membership section, you can click on the join button under any of my videos to see what the perks are and you can support my channel for a small monthly fee in exchange for some perks there. And uh, also, if you're interested in a private tarot reading, you can check out the video description. I have left my contact information there. I've also left a link to readings, testimonials actually, sorry as in reviews that I have gotten for private readings if you want to check them out. And last but not least, I also have an astrology channel and I will be linking it in the video description as well. I focus mainly on Vedic astrology, but I'm also very familiar with tropical. And I often also use tropical actually because I have more than 20 years of experience in both of them basically. Over 10 years experience in Vedic actually. So yeah, if you are interested in astrology, you want to find out more about that, you can check out my astrology channel, maybe subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you very much for listening, and I hope to see you at my next tarot reading. Bye! Welcome pile number two, this is your reading. If you have chosen the Six of Swords and or this Unikite Crystal, I'm going to take this one out of here and I'm going to stick it in. Wait, I have to light the candle as well. I'm going to try to light the candle. Be right back. All right, so this is going to be the card selection phase. I'm going to add timestamps if you don't want to sit through it because I will take my time. All right, let's see. Let me get some oracle cards. Spirit, tell me, what can you tell me for pile number two? What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Tell me, spirit. Spirit, what can you tell me for pile number two? Who is there? What the heck? All right, these are too many, but... 
spirit tell me about bio number two who is their future spouse what is their future spouse's physical appearance spirit what can you tell me for pile number two what is pile number two's future spouse's physical appearance so let's see have goose inner knowing we have tiger fire we have cougar assertive all right so you're the cat pile <laughs> we have love oh very romantic we have love and we have abundance wow okay okay i can get the picture already pile number two but of course i'm gonna draw some tarot cards as well tell me spirit what can you tell me for pile number two who is there i mean what is their future spouse's physical appearance what can you tell me spirit tell me everything you can pile number two's future spouse's physical appearance these two want to come out together so I'm, you're getting an extra card Compared to pile number one, we have the Emperor. Hmm. We have Nine of Cups, Four of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, the Knight of Swords, the Eight of Wands, the Tower. Okay. All right. Spirit, tell me about pile number two. What is your future spouse? Ooh, this one just wanted to come out. All right, so we have the eight, eight of swords. Tell me, what is pile number one's future spouse's physical appearance? Tell me, spirit. What is pile number two's future spouse's physical appearance? What is pile number two's future spouse's physical appearance? one more okay so we have page of pentacles death the ace of swords the three of wands the queen of swords and the tower again underneath the tower wow pile number two intense very intense this is someone who's intense like not no, not kidding here so we have uh first of all yeah let me start with reading the oracle cards so you got this oracle card with love i'm going to show it up close here it is we have the love card and you also have this card with abundance. And then you also have these from the animal spirits. You have goose inner knowing. You are a brave traveler. Your soul knows the way. Be confident. You will achieve your destination. Loyal friends are always with you. Don't worry. You are blessed. Let yourself fly. We have tiger fire. I choose to be unstoppable. My passion is my power. I am bold. I am brave mighty forces come to my aid and we have cougar assertive in silence you find power claim your leadership role and take action you know where to go and what to do you have the courage and confidence to succeed so already because we have two big cats and we have the goose this makes me think this person is someone who's quite agile has a strong muscle mass this could also be someone who again if you come from vedic astrology this could be someone who has placements in Purva Vajrapada Nakshatra or um, Danishta or Chitra or Vishakha Nakshatras. But I'm going to get more into more details about these when I get to the astrological notes. But in any case, this person is someone who has a pretty strong physique, a lot of muscle mass. I see this and I also see a lot of strong masculine energy, a lot of fire. 
Um, we have fire and air dominant energies here. Um, you know, someone who's really independent, masculine, intelligent, on the move. Um, and we also have the tower coming out twice, one underneath the other, which is like really intense here. I can't believe this. I mean, really, spirit is absolutely listening because for pile number one, and my plan actually for all piles was to just pull out six cards from each deck. And with your uh, deck, I really had this strong pull to, to get two cards together. So I got an extra, the seventh card, and then I pulled the seventh card for the second row for symmetry, and it turned out to be the tower, one underneath the other. And then on the tower, you actually have the number seven numerologically. I mean, it's intense. <laughs> like, so number seven is ruled by K2, the way that I see it. So this could be a person who has a very intense energy, is very um, intuitive, but also very instinctive, potentially impulsive. And with the tower energy, we have like a really, yeah, kind of a whirlwind energy. So this could be someone who... Um, just has like a, a real like vibrates a very strong energy a lot of root chakra energy as well but they could also just be someone who has a very rich inner landscape they could have mood swings maybe um i'm not necessarily saying that this is someone who has like a really bad temper although there is that potential because you also have the knight of swords <laughs> So, um, yeah, this is someone who is, you know, hot blooded, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of fire, a lot of like go getter energy and, you know, a force to be reckoned with. So again, it makes me also, by the way, Kali, yeah, is connected to Purva Bajrapada. So I wouldn't be surprised if you actually get Purva Bajrapada at the astrological notes that I'm going to pull later. Um, uh, second contender would be Ardra, maybe Nakshatra, and then all the other Nakshatras that I mentioned previously that are ruled by the tiger or the lion. Um, yeah, so basically a lot of intense energy, someone who is pretty masculine. I'm, I'm getting, unlike pile number one, I'm actually getting predominance of masculine energy, at least so far here. So we also have the emperor as the first card. So this could be someone who is also quite mature. Um, could be someone who also has a strong Saturn energy. So I'm getting someone who, um, yeah, like I said, it's is this person is either mature like uh, in physical appearance or in their energy, the way that they carry themselves, their personality. So I'm getting like a wise energy here, someone who has been through a lot of stuff and has learned through experience. They have maybe kind of a how should I put it? Like someone who has weathered many storms, you know, like that kind of an energy. And I'm also getting the energy of someone who's fast moving, who likes to be on the go and likes an active lifestyle. So this could also be someone who maybe goes to the gym a lot. In any case, because of these energies, this could be someone who has a strong muscle mass, you know, like well-developed muscle mass. Um, now, you could technically also be maybe slightly overweight and have a strong muscle mass, or you could be even slightly underweight and be, have a strong muscle mass. So I'm not saying that this is someone who's going to look like a bodybuilder, but definitely someone who, you know, likes to work out and has a kind of toned physique. And um, yeah, this is a person who, I, again, I'm going to give you more than just physical characteristics. I'm giving you everything that I see. But this could be someone who just... Um, when they are in a predicament, they follow their intuition to get out. They also have um, something about their appearance could be a little bit understated. Makes me think of minimalism also with the Saturnian energy. So this could be someone who maybe prefers very simple attire, um, nothing too flashy. So they will prefer quantity over, uh, sorry, quality over quantity. And they could be someone, you know, this makes me think of, you know, how wealthy people dress down to, to avoid envy. Like, this is the kind of energy that I'm getting here. So this could be someone who um, dresses in a way that you would not know what their status or their uh, real financial situation is. So I feel like someone who's downplaying their um, status and their financial situation through their appearance through their um fashion sense 
and yeah or it could just be just someone who likes to travel light and because of that they don't they don't want to you know wear too too much flashiness like too many accessories or jewelry or anything like that um i'm also getting something like this person could like dark colors when it comes to their fashion sense like Again, I'm really getting like minimalist vibes here. So, you know, someone who just likes to dress in an understated manner. Maybe there's someone who like wears the same favorite shirt like 20 times. Um, like, I don't know, 20 times in a row. Can you do that without washing it? You know what I mean? You know, someone who has maybe like a handful of favorite clothing articles and they keep wearing it over and over again. Like they don't seem to care too much about other people's appearance, uh, opinions. Yeah. Or appearances. This could be someone who um, even has like an air about them where they just look like they don't care about other people's opinion. So I'm getting a bit of a rebel here energy. Also with the Queen of Swords, which is Aquarius energy. So there's a lot of um, air and fire, like I said. And also we have the Queen of, of Wands. So this person is someone who's really confident. Like this is someone whose confidence shines from the inside out. This is someone who knows who they are. They're a go-getter. And with this fire energy, I'm getting someone who has, like I said, not just a strong physique. They could have like especially strong shoulders and a strong jawline because of this fire energy, especially Leo. I'm getting Leo and Aquarius. With the Aquarius energy, there could also something there could be something a bit of a hippie or bohemian about them. Um, again, a hippie or, bo or bohemian, but not exaggeratedly, you know, like, um, not someone who is like wearing seashells around their necks or something in the sense that, again, there could be just something kind of like free spirited about the way that they present themselves. With respect to, um, yeah, physical appearance, this could also show Scorpio energy. There could be Saturn Scorpio energy as well. Scorpio or Pluto, however you want to look at. But I'm seeing K2 actually, because in Vedic astrology, Scorpio is ruled by K2 and co-ruled by Mars. So in tropical, it's ruled by Pluto. But I would mostly look at it as K2 energy, which is south node of the moon. Because we also have this K2 energy through the tower coming out twice. So this person, uh, you know, something about their energy is pretty dark, to be honest. You know, like, I, I'm not just, I'm not talking here about actual literal complexion necessarily. But something about their energy. Like, something could be really intense, brooding, serious. Pretty much. I also, with the Three of Wands... They could be sporty and they could potentially have something of maybe they dress from other cultures than their own, you know, like they might adopt something. I don't want to say like they culturally appropriate, but appropriate, sorry, but they could be like wearing something they could be drawn to maybe a certain foreign culture or multiple foreign cultures or they like to wear stuff that has some kind of a cultural meaning. And it may, I, I'm getting especially from a culture that is different than their own, um, but could be from their own culture as well. But I'm especially getting that this could be the kind of person that, you know, likes to study other cultures. Maybe they pick up uh, souvenirs and accessories like clothing and accessories from, from the places that they visit and they like to wear stuff from those cultures. This person also just has, I, I, overall, I'm actually getting this something about their um, energy and the way that they present themselves comes across as very self-sufficient. You know, like this is someone who's not easily shaken up by other people's opinions or pr social pressures. Um, there's kind of like this energy of self-love about this person. And I don't mean like um, they come across as arrogant or anything. There's just something free-spirited about them. There's a lot of wisdom with this person, yeah. And no doubt with this energy, they have gone through stuff. And they probably look like someone who has gone through stuff, you know. They might even have scars for some of you.
but in any case like this is someone who has gone through a lot of ups and downs in life a lot of painful transformations oh and another thing though with the a death card this could literally be someone who has had some kind of surgical procedures i mean cosmetic procedures not necessarily downright surgical but they could have altered their appearance somehow I'm also getting the sense that this is someone who has sharp features. So, again, with a Saturn energy, I'm getting Saturn energy, K2 energy, maybe a bit of Mars. So this is someone who most likely has some sharp features. Something, something about them just gives an overall vibe of sharpness. Um, it's not necessarily that they're super thin or something or bony. Uh, but they could have like a prominent nose, for instance. Maybe they have a sharp chin. Maybe they have thin lips. Um, something about their overall vibe just comes across as like, yeah, sharp. Um, and also with respect to the way that they... The way they present themselves, like I said, it could be that they like simple but sharp attire. Especially when it comes to formal settings, like where, when they go to work. I'm also getting, with the visionary and the page of, of uh, pentacles here, this person could be an idealist of some kind. So they could also somehow be dressing in ways, like, you can see their beliefs through their appearance somehow, you know? Maybe through the way they present themselves, through their fashion sense, or maybe through their hair, hair colors or something. Um, you could see their beliefs through their, their physical appearance, um, their ideals. Or it could literally be that this person is religious and they dress in a way that is appropriate according to their religion. All right. Pretty much this is what I get from the, um, from the cards here. Let me get the astrological notes. I mean, the astrological cards first. Let's see. Spirit, what can you tell me for pile number two's future spouse? What is this person's physical appearance? What is pile number two's future spouse's physical appearance, Spirit? What is pile number two's future spouse's physical appearance, Spirit? Tell me, Spirit. Oh, this one. So, let's see. We have, oh, Uranus, okay. So we have a confirmation of the Aquarius energy, right? Because Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius in, um, Vedi sorry, in tropical astrology. We have seventh house, love and partnership. So this is interesting because it's a confirmation of this love card that you have. So something about this person's appearance could come across as very romantic. But with the seventh house, what this also shows is that either you or even other people see this person as an ideal spouse. But I think most likely this is for you. Like, you're going to immediately see that this person is, like, the one you want to marry. Um, all right. So we have Chiron, inner healing. So this is a bit of Aquarius as well. I would connect this to Sata Bishak Nakshatra, which falls in Aquarius in Vedic Astrology. We have Sagittarius, the world explorer. That explains the three of wands energy. And we have fourth house, home and family. <laughs> okay, so that could potentially explain the four on the emperor card. So this person with Sagittarius, okay. So this is someone you know, like, this is a confirmation of what I said with this person having a lot of masculine energy. Because it's predominantly masculine energy up until this point. Anyway, we have Sagittarius, which is fire. And then we have Aquarius, which is air. Which is exactly what I said, basically. That we have a predominance of swords and wands, which is basically um, air and fire in that order. So this person could have broad a broad physique. They could have a tall physique as well because of the Sagittarius energy. So broad shoulders, long limbs, an oval face, uh, most likely taller than average and, and or their physical body could really be imposing somehow. But this also shows a good amount of athleticism, like I said. So this person probably likes to be physically active. 
And we also have the Aquarius energy, which shows a touch of the unusual about this person. This also confirms what I said about the sharp features, because in Vedic astrology, Aquarius is ruled by Saturn and Rahu, which is the north node of the moon. And a bit, a touch of exotic here, like I said, because Rahu rules foreign cultures. So again, this person could either be coming from a slightly mixed cultural background or maybe from a culture that a cultural background that is different from yours at least a little bit or it could just be that the way that they present themselves they um incorporate elements from other cultures in their fashion sense and maybe the accessories they wear whatever everything that they use to present themselves and what they wear on a regular basis yeah i don't want to say culturally appropriate but maybe for some of you <laughs> It goes to cultural appropriation. I don't know. In any case, so it also, both of the Aquarius and the Sagittarius energies point to um, rather above average height and rather slender. Like I would say a slender to average physical build. So not someone who is extremely bulky, uh, but I'm also going to see what else is going to come through as I go along. And we also have the fourth house, which is connected to cancer, which rules the chest and the stomach area. So the chest and the stomach area could be particularly prominent in this person, very attractive in this person. So uh, again, you might really notice their chest and or their stomach. All right. And with the inner healing here with Sata Bishak, which also makes me, you know, this is also Aquarius energy as far as I am reading it. And this makes me think of, again, could be that this person has had some issue with their physical appearance. So they could be a confirmation for some of you that this is someone who has had some work done. Um, and or this could just show that this is someone who is not particularly happy about their appearance. So they have to somehow do some healing or someone who has done some healing, some significant has gone maybe through some kind of significant transformation of their physical appearance. Yeah, so this is what I'm getting here. So I'm going to get more of astrological notes in a bit. All right, so I've taken the Ziploc bag, which is a very high-tech instrument of work. So Spirit, what can you tell me for file number two? File number two is future spouse's physical appearance. What is file number two is future spouse's physical appearance, Spirit? Tell me. Tell me, what is file number two of future spouse's physical appearance? Okay. So, let's see, Spirit, what is pile number two of future spouse's physical appearance? What is pile number two of future spouse's physical appearance? I think that's enough. All right, that's plenty, 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 plenty. <clears throat> so let's see we have Revati Nakshatra which falls in Pisces is ruled by Mercury so that's connected to travel we have Maka Nakshatra which falls in Leo and is ruled by Ketu so there we have the first Ketu confirmation we have Shravana which is ruled by the moon falls in Capricorn so we do have the Capricorn energy we have Ashlesha, which falls in Cancer, is ruled by Mercury. So far, two of the Mercury energies. We have Hasta, which is ruled by the Moon, falls in Virgo. So a lot of Moon and Virgo energy up until this point. Let's see more of the Nakshatras. We have Chitra. Okay, so we do have the Tiger. Like I said initially, there's a confirmation. And we have, let's see, we have Hasta Nakshatra coming out twice, falling in Virgo, ruled by the Moon. Um, we have Purva Bhadrapada, very strong confirmation of what I said initially with the Kali energy. We have Swati falling in Libra, ruled by Rahu, a touch of Rahu there. Let's see, what else? Ashlesha again, alright, so Hasta and Ashlesha came out twice. Okay... We have Mula, which is ruled by Ketu, so the second Ketu rule nakshatra. Let's see more. We have Rohini, which falls in Taurus, is ruled by the moon. We have Barani, falls in Aries, ruled by Venus. 
Raven T again. All right. We have Raven T again. So three nakshatras came out twice. That's a strong confirmations here. So you might have particularly strong energies from these. And we have Purva Ashatha. Or your spouse is going to have these three nakshatras particularly prominent. I'm talking Revati, Hasta, or Ashlesha. Let's see what else we have here. We have Libra, Energy. Okay, so that's the seventh house. So there's a repeating theme here. And we have Saturn. That's a strong confirmation of what I said with the Aquarius coming out a lot. And yeah, what I said about sharp features. And we have Jupiter, strong confirmation of the Purva Bhadrapada energy that I was talking about. Also the Three of Wands confirmation. We have Cancer. We have Leo. And we have Virgo. So again, Virgo is very strongly represented because you had Hasta twice and um, you have Virgo. So Hasta falls in Virgo and then you also have Virgo. So again, uh, and we also have Chitra, which partially falls in Virgo as well. So this person could have really prominent Virgo energy uh, or you could have, you know, your spouse archetypes, signifiers, like the seventh house lord venus if you're a man or jupiter if you're a woman or mars if you're a woman uh in some of these nakshatras right especially the ones that repeated or the signs that repeated in any case i'm going to break down what all of these mean so we have uh, the prominent the most prominent energies that came through right so hasta this shows that this person's face is really pretty oh because of the virgo and the moon energy like for instance leo dicaprio has moon and hosta just to give you an example um so it's i've seen this a lot all right like leo dicaprio is like the first example that i can think about right off the top of my head but um as far as i have seen and also um what's her name <sighs> i don't remember her name but the one who played um I think her name was Bella in um, Twilight, the main actress from Twilight. I don't remember her name, <laughs> um, but she also has Moon and Hasta because I remember reading her horoscope at some point. So just to give you an example, just a few examples, because Hasta energy can tend to show this kind of inverted triangle uh, face shape. So a face that is heavier on the top and around the eye area and the cheek area and has like a narrow jaw um, and maybe a pointy chin, you know, so uh, relatively kind of delicate features, actually. Usually they tend to be well above average pretty, as you see with these examples. Um, also with Hasta, it, so it tends to show, especially the eyes, the eyes can tend to have like a um a greenish hint a lot of the times but again it does depend on genetics as well and um also the moon energy from hasta tends towards a, a lighter complexion but again it does depend on genetics so it's within the limits of genetic inheritance and um also it tends to show um that these people can be very dreamy very romantic unfortunately they can also be good liars <laughs> um but it shows with respect again strictly to physical uh characteristics tends to show um not just an inverted triangle face but also it shows their hands and their arms could be really standing out so their hands and their arms could be particularly attractive maybe they also use their hands a lot on a regular basis like um, either their hands really stand out or maybe they play an instrument. They could even be someone who's into magic tricks as well because Hasta has a connection to magic, right? So that's something that I could say. Or they could maybe play sports that use the arms and the hands and also the shoulders as well. So yeah, can use the limbs a lot, <laughs> the upper limbs. Um, we also have Shravana. So there's a lot of like moon energy here. We have actually all of the moon um ruled nakshatras came out all of the all the three moon ruled nakshatras which are rohini hasta and shravana so this person could have something about their appearance that is even a touch ethereal romantic um their eyes could really stand out they could have really pretty eyes so it, it's really interesting because we have like multiple indicators that the eyes are standing out but from different 
point of view. So the Mula and the Purva Bajrapada energies can tend to show rather intense eyes, you know, like uh, also can tend towards a darker, um, well, not necessarily, it depends on a lot of other things. But with Mula especially, I tend to see a lot of like really intense dark eyes. Uh, but it doesn't have to be, of course, a lot depends also on genetic inheritance. But in any case, with Mula and Purva Bhadrapada, sorry, you have a lot of intense energy with this person. So this person could also have like a lot of intense energy, but then they also could have something romantic and dreamy about them at the same time. So they're kind of like a collection of paradoxes here. What I can tell you is that they're definitely attractive and the Purva Bhadrapada energy can make them seem a little bit dark. It explains the death energy as well. So um, there could be like a touch of the dark and sinister about them even. But on the other hand, it, they could be the kind of people that are not even really aware of how pretty they are sometimes. Um, so they could, like I, like, I get, like I said, it could be like someone who just doesn't put too much effort into their appearance at times. So people might think like they don't even care about their appearance or other people's opinions of them. Um, but it could show uh, also a lot of masculine energy, like I said. So I'm not surprised that we have Purva Bajrapada. I am a little bit surprised to see all of the moon nakshatras and also some of the Venus. Yeah, because I, I do get that this pile has a predominance of masculine energy. But, you know, again, no people are, like, no human being is, like, entirely masculine or entirely feminine the way that I see it anyway from astrology. So, in any case, this person, though, they have an intense energy. There could be something very independent about them. Let's not also forget that Purva Bajrapada also falls in Aquarius, the large portion of it, and a little bit in Pisces. Um, there's something about them that is definitely kind of a free spirit, um, someone who likes to roam around a bit of a globetrotter maybe or someone who has this kind of air of adventurousness about them because of the chitra energy and all of the virgo actually can make this person see this is what i'm talking about it's a collection of paradoxes so it could be that for some of you this person is more um you know relaxed about their appearance to the point where they're kind of like a hippie for others of you, it could be that this person actually puts a lot of um, effort into their appearance and controlling the way that they present themselves. But in either situation, I don't see someone who like goes overboard in, um, you know, like decorating themselves and putting on a lot of clothes and stuff. I see mostly someone who is like opting for simple stuff, a simple, a simple presentation. But... This person could have like a lot of uh, sensuality as well. You actually have some energies in common with pile number one. So if you felt drawn to it at all, you might want to check it out. But only if you felt drawn to it. Because you also have a lot of like very distinct energies here that didn't show up in pile number one. So in any case, I'm going to um, give you some examples. Like for instance, with Barani, this person can have... Also with Barani and Purva Bhadrapada, these nakshatras are actually literally connected to death. So it's a very strong confirmation that you have both of these nakshatras and you also have the death card. But death is to be seen, of course, as a transformative energy. So again, in this case, it could be that um, maybe something about this person is a little bit dark and brooding. They could like to wear dark colors. Um, maybe they even have kind of a creepy aesthetic, especially with poor Baba Drapada. That could be the case, like someone who likes horror movies and wears t-shirts with horror movies or something. Um, so there could be a touch of like dark about them, something creepy and dark. Um, just to give you an example, Grimes has sun in Purva Bhadrapada. And <laughs> I think she has more than one planet in Purva Bhadrapada. I don't remember exactly. She definitely has at least one planet in Purva Bhadrapada. Um, Jody Comer, who plays Villanelle in uh, Killing Eve, has sun in Purva Bhadrapada. Um, Rachel Weiss has strong Purva Bhadrapada. I think the sun as well. Um, Catherine Zeta-Jones, who just played Morticia, has Moon in Purva Bajapada. But here's the thing, Purva Bajapada is actually known to be quite sexy, quote-unquote, but it's, like, sexy with a touch of danger. So, yeah, kind of a dark sexiness, so it's, like, similar to Scorpio in a way. This person definitely, by the way, 
uh, will come across as I would say above average attractive because you do have not just Hasta coming out twice um, you also have Chitron which is kind of known to be attractive especially when it comes to the physical body Rohini as well and Purva Shadha and Barani they're known to be really pretty Swati as well can show that this person easily attracts attention um, and again, this person can actually be popular and uh, easily attract attention because we have Maga and Swati and both of these are connected to fame and popularity. Um, but you also have Ashlesha. You have Ashlesha coming out twice. That's what I was going to say. So Ashlesha is also a very sexy energy. Just to give you some examples, uh, Lana Del Rey has actually has Moon and Ashlesha in the um d1 chart and she has moon and mula in in the d9 chart and she also has some strong bar on the energy as well so yeah Lana del rey is a good example for a lot of the energies that you have over here and um another example with ashlesha could be for instance kylie minogue uh megan fox uh, Machine Gun Kelly actually also has strong ashlesha energy so a lot of like kind of seductive at least among the famous people that I can think about. So Ashlesha is notorious for having um, a kind of seductive energy and it's actually connected to hypnosis, believe it or not. So they could even be like these people that you're going to marry, right? So they could have something hypnotic about them. Maybe even if they're not physically attractive, although I do see that for most of you, this person is going to be physically attractive. Even if they're not, though, they will have something about them that is very hypnotic, very magnetic, and easily draws people in. Um, we have the Purva Ashadha energy, which can show, like, wavy hair. It can also show this person is very drawn to the sea and sea life. Maybe they like to wear things that, you know, <clears throat> somehow have to do with the sea. I don't know. Maybe they have a seashell in their ear or something. <laughs> um... <laughs> It can show also pretty features. So I see with Purva Shadha a lot of like wavy hair, very beautiful hair actually in general. So Giselle Bunchen has Purva Shadha energy. Lord, the singer, has ascendant in Purva Shadha. Um, Liv Tyler has moon in Purva Shadha. It also tends to give, um, and it, by the way, it also falls in Sagittarius. So we have this the strong confirmation of this card that came through with Sagittarius, the world explorer. So this could be a person who has like a, a rather oval face, you know, that's what I was going to say as well. So again, we're getting contradictory ener energies, but considering that I'm reading probably for a lot of people, it makes sense. So for some of you, this person could have rather a an elongated face. And for some of you, this could be like a triangular face, like I said, with the Hasta Nakshatra. Rohini is notorious for having very pretty eyes, same as Revati. So just to give you some examples of famous people who have Rohini energy, I can tell you that um, I actually mentioned this example in pile number one. Darren Hayes, the singer from Savage Garden, has Moon and, sorry, Mars, Venus, I'm pretty sure, conjunct in Rohini. He has very pretty eyes, um, and so Rohinis are very known for, like, their traditionally beautiful features, and uh, usually they tend to have kind of feminine features as well. And also Rohinis are known to really like compliments, regardless of their gender, but <laughs> they may or may not be open about it. Um, also Aishwarya Rai, I'm pretty sure, has Moon and Rohini as well. Uh, Vivian Lee also had some significant energy in Rohini. So Rohinis are very much known for having stunning eyes, you know. And they're also quite hypnotic because they're also kind of connected to the snake, you know, the energy of the snake. So they're quite hypnotic in general. Also, Angelina Jolie, I think, has... Uh, Angelina Jolie actually has Sun in Rohini and Moon, uh, Mars, and Jupiter in Revati, which you also had somewhere over here. Actually, you had Revati twice. So yeah, Revati and Rohini are known to have very pretty eyes. And uh, also, uh, Rihanna has Ascendant in Revati Nakshatra, just to give an example. Also, Halle Berry has Ascendant in Barani. And Barani can also have kind of a serious brooding appearance. So they could have also physically an energy of heaviness about their body. But generally brooding and heaviness, uh, especially when it comes to their physical features, their facial features. So um, again, I mentioned this in pile number one, the guy who played um, 
his the actor Pablo something. I forgot his name and I mentioned him in other readings. <laughs> his name is Pablo and um, he played the main male character in The Last of Us. And he also acted in um, Game of Thrones. And yeah, that guy. He has this kind of like brooding energy, a bit dark as well. Um, so that's the kind of Barney energy that I'm talking about. Like I mentioned, also, Lana Del Rey has significant Barney. She has uh, Venus and Rahu conjunct in Barney. And then uh, Vivian Lee also had Ascendant in Barney. Halle Berry had Ascendant in Barney, has Ascendant in Barney. Um, also, um, it, it, I'm pretty sure Edgar Casey, yeah, if you know him, the psychic, and also Carl Jung also had Barney. I, I'm pretty sure he had Moon or Ascendant in Barney. And... Um, also, Antonia Banderas has strong Barney energy. So, a lot of these actors who tend to have kind of a, like, um, a, a facial expressions that show a kind of emotional heaviness and, and, and a seriousness to their expression. So, that's the kind of energy that you can expect to see in your spouse. You know, maybe there's something really serious about their countenance, um, but also kind of a sensuousness about them as well. So, there's kind of like a, a touch of dark sensuality with this pile, really. That's unmistakable, really. Um, yeah, but overall, these are the general energies that I'm getting. And also with Swati, like I said, Taylor Swift or Richard Dormer are some examples that have prominent Swati nakshatras. With Swati nakshatra, you actually also often see kind of an inverted triangle face or kind of a short face. Okay, maybe not a, an inverted triangle, but like could also be a roundish face, but... A face where that that is like more towards the short side as opposed to oval or oblong and also the eyes could really stand out again and yeah like I said these energies really uh, Swati and Magha for instance can really be connected to popularity with Magha Nakshatra you can also see someone who's very interested in sports so we have like multiple confirmations that this person could have a strong body like they could be really pretty athletic with Magha, similarly to Mula, actually, and similarly to all K2 energies in general, uh, you could have, like, a pretty intense stare, intense eyes. Um, again, to give you some examples, with Magha, mm, Gal Gadot, actually, um, she has some strong Magha. I'm pretty sure she has Moon in Magha, but I'm not 100% sure. I know for sure that she has some strong Magha energy, I'm not sure if it's the moon or the ascendant or something, but many very famous people have Magha Nakshatra uh, because this this Nakshatra is actually connected to fame. So a lot of people who have this will tend to um, tend to become famous like one way or another, <clears throat> especially if they're involved in, you know, show business or the arts or something. And also Gautier, for instance, the guy who had that song of Now You're Just Somebody that I used to know. Uh, I'm pretty sure he also has Moon and Magha, but I'm not 100% sure. I know he has some strong Magha placements. All right. So this is pretty much what I've seen through the notes. And actually, wait, I'm going to get one final touch with the astrological notes. Okay, so I'm going to use the Astrodice Spirit. What can you tell me for pile number two? Tell me for pile number two. Who... Are they going to marry? What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Period. Okay, so we have Gemini. We have Rahu energy. <laughs> Further confirmation of the Aquarius. And we have number 10, which can show Capricorn. So definitely confirmations that we have a lot of Mercury, all right? So Gemini and Virgo have the same ruler, which is Mercury. So again, this could be a, com a, a strong confirmation of what I said with respect to this person's hands and arms standing out. Also, this person having kind of greenish eyes sometimes and a, a strong tendency to have kind of a face that is kind of like an inverted triangle or a triangular face somehow, like a delicate jawline, maybe a pointy chin. And also, there's something about them that's quite youthful, you know. And with the Rahu, again, there could be something really unconventional about the way that they present themselves, or, or they could be coming from a different cultural background, literally. Um, and somehow, yeah, they could have a bit unusual features. 
either it's their physical features or the way that they present themselves like i said their fashion sense so they could be drawn to like foreign cultures like i said maybe culturally adopt i don't want to say appropriate they might adopt elements from foreign cultures in the way that they present themselves and we have the number 10 which is saturn capricorn energy so that's a strong confirmation that this person has some sharp features um strong bone structure maybe um you know like the bone structure stands out and i'm getting like for most of you um yeah i'm getting that this is someone who tends towards a slim build like i said slim to average build so i'm 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 thinking it's really unlikely that they are overweight all right so let me get some more signifier spirit tell me about pile number two's person who is pile number two going to marry oh, all right all right so the first thing that stands out to me is this smiley face which cracks me up because you have so much jupiter energy so this person could definitely be someone who on the surface they come across as like happy or they just have this kind of happy-go-lucky jovial energy this is interesting because it's like a gothic heart. <laughs> so I would take this as a confirmation, actually, of what I said with the Purva Bhadrapada. You know what this makes me think of, actually, and also with the strong K2 energy that you have. You might want to check out the video that I, okay, I'm advertising a little bit. But you want to check, you might want to check out the video that I have posted on my astrology channel um, titled Archetypes of K2. I really went in depth there about the aesthetics connected to K2 and the kind of stuff that these people are drawn to. And I mentioned how, um, what was his name? Something del Toro, um, Guillermo del Toro, right? Uh, the director, like, he also has significant K2 energy and, like, his movie aesthetics in all of his movies are very much connected to creepiness and you know ghosts and dead bodies and supernatural creatures and i mentioned a bunch of like famous people there <laughs> so that's what it makes me think of actually it makes me think of like guillermo del toro's uh movies like especially the one with mia vashikovska and uh tom hiddleston and um the redhead i rem i don't i forgot her name uh jessica chastain right i don't remember what the movie is called but you can look for it um it's something about it's very gothic the movie is very gothic so again there's there could be something about this person that is just really gothic you know um like maybe their style or they they could just come across as someone who might pass for a goth you know like the way that they maybe there's there's something dark and brooding about them like i said we also have the butterfly again, which is kind of a symbol of transformation. So again, this makes me think this could be a person who has gone through procedures. Either they have actually gone through cosmetic procedures or they could be someone who, um, again, maybe even a sex change for some of you. Um, but it could just be that maybe they've had some significant glow up at some point in their lives you know like they were they went through an ugly duckling phase maybe when they were kids or when they were young or at some point you know decided to get in shape maybe they were overweight or something i don't know stuff like that could be that but there's a theme of transformation and at the very least if it's not about physical transformation it just shows this person has very harmonious features and we have the bird here which makes me think again of lightness you know someone who's light on their feet, um, someone who likes to move around a lot. So this is what it makes me think of. And we have the elephant here, which is the element, uh, sorry, the animal associated with both Barani and Ravati, which came out for you. So yeah, I just see this as further confirmation. I feel like for most of you, this person is above average in height and could also be quite robust looking. Yeah, but I don't think they're like overweight or obese. I don't think so, for most anyway. And yeah, we have the uh, bow here. <laughs> the ribbon, sorry, bow, ribbon. Okay, so again, this makes me think of something formal, you know? It makes me think that maybe for some of you, this person could be like prim and proper. Another thing that this makes me think of, actually, especially since you also have Purva Bhadrapada, 
uh, which can sometimes hint to um, someone who has a little bit hidden, like they could have a hidden side to them. Because uh, Purva Bajrapada is some, sometimes symbolized by the two-faced man. And again, I have done a video on my astrology channel where I talked more in depth about this nakshatra. If you want to search for it on my channel. <laughs> hey, I'm just giving friendly recommendations in case you want to do more research. Um, but it makes me think that maybe this person presents themselves in a way that is actually pretty different from their true nature. Or it's like difficult for you to read what they really are like based on their appearance you know so it may not be that they're like actively trying to misrepresent themselves but it's just that people might assume things based on what they look like and what they dress like that are not accurate about them or you know you would be surprised as to how different they are from your initial assumptions and we have a little heart here, which just shows... I mean, we did have the love card, and we have the seventh house. So again, this person could look like an, an ideal partner. Definitely to you, this person could look like... I mean, this is the person you're going to marry, right? So I... But I think it's like, um, you know, this person comes across as very romantic, you know? And you might notice from the get-go that this is someone who's very, very much in line with your ideal you know, your image for an ideal spouse, basically. Okay, so um, this is the charms. So I'm going to move on to the final stage of the reading, which is notes, actual notes about physical characteristics. All right, so I have gotten the high-tech method of the Ziploc bag. Um, I just traveled, right, from another continent, and I took my notes, my temporary notes, anyway. So... Barry, tell me about pile number two. Tell me about pile number two. What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Tell me, spirit, what is pile number two's future spouse's physical appearance? Nothing wants to come out anymore. Spirit, tell me about pile number two. What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Oh, these just... I don't know. This doesn't feel right, to be honest. Spirit, tell me about pile number two. What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Okay, I think that's enough. No, this doesn't feel right. Okay, so let's see. File number two. We have black eyes. We have blue or gray eyes. Cheek dimples. Gray hair. Short to medium height. We have mischievous smile. So there's a lot of mercury stuff, dimples and smile, okay? We have tattoo. There's the Rahu energy coming out. So for some of you, they could have a tattoo. Active, okay? So that came through a lot in the reading. We have medium tan skin. Classic elegant style. So for some of you, yes, that matches what I saw. We have straw, strong jaw. Um, slim build. Chin dimple, loads of dimples, light to medium blonde hair. We have raspy voice, dark tan skin. We have chin dimple again. Let's see, slim build again. So particularly strong confirmation of what I said with the Saturn energy. We have oval face, confirmation of what I said. Black eyes again. Okay, we have green eyes as well. So confirmation of what I said with the hosta energy. Square face. Rounded face. So we have like every face shape. Okay. Uniform. So this person could be wearing a uniform. Maybe they're in the military or something. We have thin lips. So, confirmation of that Saturn energy. We have melancholic, serious expression, confirmation of the Saturn and the Barani energy. 
We have broad shoulders, confirmation of a lot of the energies that came through as well. Um, square face again. We have jewelry. So yeah, this person could be wearing jewelry for some of you. Um, cheek dimples again. Strong energy of cheek dimples or chin dimples. We have beautiful hands. Wow, strong confirmation of the hostile energy in multiple of these, multiple notes here. Deep voice. This could also come from Barani. I should have mentioned it. Greta Garbo also had Moon in Barani. Now that I remember, now that I think about it, actually. We have green eyes again. Okay, so green eyes and black eyes came out twice. Okay, and we have gray or white hair. This also came out twice, gray hair. All right, so this is what I have for you, pile number two. I hope you have enjoyed this. And if you have, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, click on the notifications bell if you want to see when I will post a new tarot reading. Please comment in the comment section with any feedback you would like to give or ideas for future videos that you would like me to cover on my channel. Um, if you would like to support my channel further, you can click on the join button and contribute with a small monthly fee in exchange for some perks, which you will see if you click on the join button under any of my videos. And uh, if you're interested in a private tarot reading, you can check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there as well as a link to reviews I have gotten in the past for private readings if you're curious to see them. And last but not least, I also have an astrology channel and I focus mainly on Vedic astrology, but I also use insights from tropical astrology because I have over 20 years of experience now in astrology, over 10 in Vedic astrology as well. But yeah, I focus mainly on Vedic and I also use my knowledge from tropical every now and then. So if you're curious to find out more about my astrology channel, check out the link in the video description, maybe subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you at my next tarot reading. Bye! Hello pile number three, this is your reading if you have chosen this card, which is the Emperor and or this rhodochrosite crystal so i am going to be shuffling now and wait let me all right <laughs> i'm gonna be shuffling right now so yeah i'm gonna add timestamps so you can skip directly to the reading spirit tell me about pile number three the people who chose the rhodochrosite what is their future spouse's physical appearance Spirit, what is pile number three's future spouse's physical appearance? Spirit, what is pile number three's future spouse's physical appearance? Okay. Black Bear Guardian. Raccoon Inventor, Inventor, Goose Inner Knowing, we have Repression, number 22, and we have Power, okay, interesting, I mean, there's a symmetry here between these two cards all right spirit tell me about pile number three what is their future spouse's physical appearance what is pile number three is this future future spouse's physical appearance We have the Eight of Pentacles, we have the Three of Swords, the Six of Pentacles, the Ten of Swords, the Ten of Pentacles, the Two of Pentacles.
Spirit, tell me about pile number three's future spouse's physical appearance. What does this person look like? We have the tower. We have strength. We have the knight of swords. The six of swords the eight of cups the five of pentacles all right let me get another card here because it feels kind of empty so spirits tell me about pile number three future spouses physical appearance who is this person what do they look like tell me what is pile number three all right this one so we have the eight of wands so pile number three you have some consistent energies here i mean some um continuous messages but i'm going to start by reading the oracle card so we have black bear guardian gentle and wise protector give me your confidence and power Help me protect the ones I love, awaken my intuition, and guide me. Raccoon, inventor, decide on what you really want. You have the ingenuity to claim it. Avoid being the trickster and practice integrity. You have many roles and can juggle them well. And Goose, inner knowing, you are a brave traveler. Your soul knows the way. Be confident you will achieve your destination. Loyal friends are always with you. Don't worry, you are blessed. Let yourself fly. And then we have this card with repression, number 22, which is a master number in numerology. And we have this card with power, which I mentioned bears a lot of symmetry, resemblance, okay, to the original emperor card that you got. So there seems to be like a similar theme here of someone who is quite established because we have this power. So already physically, I'm getting the message that this is someone who stands out and probably has a pretty strong physique. And um, we also have kind of a repeating theme here with the, the tower as well and also with the strength cards. And I'm also getting, first of all, I mean, um, there is a lot of pentacles here. Like, unlike the other two piles, um, there's a lot of pentacles. Like, pentacles is the dominant energy here. You do also have some swords going on, but I would say pentacles is definitely the strongest. Um, so, with pentacles being the strongest, this is earth energy. So, this is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy. And... This shows this person is very much focused on their work. So their physical appearance, on the one hand, can actually come across as very busy. There's kind of like a busy bee energy about this person. So it could be that they dress in a way that reflects their occupation. Because we also have the Ten of Pentacles. So we have the Emperor as the original card, like I said. So I'm guessing that for many of you, this could be a person who has a certain status connected to their job. They are respected in their profession. I think this is someone who has reached a certain level in their profession uh, where, yeah, they have a certain visibility and respectability. And uh, yeah, probably also a decent amount of, of income as well. We also have the Eight of Pentacles and we also have the, let's see, the Six of Pentacles. So... Um, yeah, this person is definitely, I mean, I'm getting like this busy bee, um, even workaholic sort of energy. We have the two of pentacles as well. And there's this message of you can do many things and juggle them well. So this person might have like multiple professions. They might be juggling multiple interests. Maybe they have a job and they are also having a side hustle. And again, I know that these are not directly linked to physical characteristics, but I'm again, I'm giving you everything that I can read through the cards. And this also can transpire in the way that this person carries themselves, maybe their themselves, sorry, their sense of style, maybe the way that they 
you know, their overall vibe and their energy. So even if it's not directly linked to physical characteristics, but I'm going to get more in detail about physical characteristics as I go along. So don't worry. Um, yeah, <laughs> this person has this busy energy, right? So a busy professional kind of energy. There's also um, a lot of physical energy about this person. They also have this very agitated energy. Like we have the Knight of Swords, we have the Eight of Wands. This suggests someone who might be quite busy and on the go and also someone who likes to stay busy, someone who likes to stay active. We do have some cards here that show a person that is quite stressed out, to be honest. We have the Ten of Swords and the Tower card here with Kali. Um, again, if this Kali card also came out in pile number two, so if you felt drawn to it, you might want to check it out, but only if you felt drawn to it, otherwise you're going to get all the messages you need from this reading. So in any case, there's this message that this person is stressed out, also with the Three of Swords here. So there could be something about their appearance that honestly shows a little bit of sadness mixed with anxiety sometimes. Um, like a person who has gone through a lot and also has a lot on their mind, a lot on their plates, you know, things they have to deal with. Um, based on all of these indicators, this could be someone who is self-employed or just someone who has, like I said, a pretty high position in their, um, let's say, place of employment or in their profession where they just have a lot of people depending on them. So, yeah, they have to stay busy, busy, busy and, you know, solve a lot of things. We do have the, like I said, the Six of Pentacles, which is connected to teaching of all kinds. So this person could be a teacher, again, not directly linked to physical appearance, but so they could be dressing like a teacher. They could be dressing according to their profession in general, but I'm getting, yeah, there could be a teacher. They could be in some kind of line of work where they are doing a service towards a community, maybe. And I definitely see that this person is someone who is entrusted. So I definitely see the repeated theme here of power and status because this is someone who is entrusted, you know, with... Um... Okay, again, this makes me think of teaching, honestly, because we have this, like, you know, protector image of, like, someone who's a guardian. It literally says guardian. Or they could be, like, someone who maybe... Um you know, helps people who are in a vulnerable state. So maybe takes care of kids or works with like social causes of all kind. But it also comes across that this person has wisdom and un ingenuity, like this card says. So a lot of um, good ideas, a lot of independent thinking. And we also have this really strong energy of repression. So I was going to say that we have a lot of strong Saturn energy and the repression card kind of reinforces that. We also have with um, we also have that with a Ten of Pentacles, which is very much Saturn, and also the Emperor card is very Capricornian, Saturnian. So yeah, this is kind of like this kind of like um, distinguished, mature sort of energy with this person that comes through. But there's definitely sadness here. Like, there's an aura about this person. There's, like, a streak of seriousness and sadness um, connected to them. It doesn't mean that they're not capable of being happy or that they never smile. Um, but there's definitely, like, this feeling about them that they're really kind of gloomy sometimes. And... I don't want to say depressed, but maybe, maybe even sometimes it might come across as really sad and depressed at times you know there's a touch of melancholy we have the five of pentacles so yeah there's like this is weird i mean this is the kind of person that makes me think of someone who has social status but still might feel alone and isolated you know, like nobody really understands them. So they could have like this aura, like a misunderstood genius about them. And honestly, there could also be like a touch of loneliness or like they could feel lonely, whether this transpires through their physical appearance or their overall energy or not.
but physically, yeah, I'm getting that they're physically strong. Like I said, they could be imposing physically, so... I'm not really getting, like, very strong energies about fa facial features. I mean, strong indicators. Not so far, but I'm going to get to astrological notes in a bit. One thing that I can say is with the Earth energy, yeah, this could be someone who has, like, like I said, so there's this strong physique energy, and that could also show a tendency towards plumpness for some people. Um... And also towards complexion and hair and stuff, it tends towards a darker complexion and hair. Like, you know, tanned, medium tanned, something like that. But of course, a lot depends on the genetic inheritance of the person. And there's also kind of an intellectual air about this person as well. They could be really sharp-tongued as well. I also think that with respect to their physical features, they're quite balanced. There's a balance, there's a harmony to their features, and also towards uh, when it comes to their physical bodies as well. I'm getting a predominance of like mature masculine energy here. All right, so this is what I can get through the tarot cards. Let me get some astrological notes. So what can you tell me for pile number three? What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Okay, so these two want to come out. Okay, we have the moon, feelings and subconscious. We have the south node of the moon, old karma, which is K2 energy. We have the trine, support and inspiration. We have Gemini. Uh, we have Virgo. So a lot of Mercury energy as well. We have fifth house, joy and play. So fifth house is kind of a confirmation about the teaching profession for some of you. This could also be connected to creativity. But the fifth house is also a lot of passion and just doing what you love. So this person definitely has a lot of passion and they could be in a profession where they love what they do. With respect to the Gemini Virgo energy, there is a strong energy of this person um, having youthful kind of features. They might look young for their age, irrespective of what their age is. With the moon energy, they also will have a pretty face. And actually, now that I'm getting the moon, actually, this will tend towards a lighter complexion. So, like, fair skin, light eyes, light hair. But again, a lot of this depends on, um, you know, genetic inheritance, like I said. A south node would also tend to point towards a lighter complexion. Um, also, with the south node of the moon, or a key to, I can say this person probably has almond-shaped eyes. They could have hooded eyes as well. And also, they could have really refined features. So if this is a woman, she could be really dainty looking. And if this is a man, he will just tend to have these kinds of like, maybe a bit intellectual, uh, an air of intellectuality, um, or in how should I put it? Like, yeah, they, they will look like, a, you know, an intellectual person. And they will tend to have features that are quite refined, you know, like chiseled somehow. And also with the Virgo, the Mercury energy, this person could have a face shape that is like an inverted triangle, um, meaning their face is heavier on the top or widest around the eyes and the cheeks, and they might have like a relatively narrow jawline. Also, the face overall could tend towards a shorter shape, like a short face shape. Also, their eye color could be greenish, but again, it will depend on genetic inheritance. There is a possibility that they will have green eyes or like slight flecks of green, irrespective of what their eye color, their dominant eye color is. 
With the moon also, they might have a bit of a wide face and some of them might have a rounded face. And um, they might tend towards plumpness as well, actually, with the moon energy. Or they might have like rounded cheeks or something. The eyes could be dreamy and romantic. All right, pretty much what I can tell from these cards. And also the K2 energy with the old karma. Again, this could be a feeling of deja vu when you meet them or just some strong feelings. Like you could just feel strong feelings. It's not necessarily going to be like love at first sight. Uh, but there could be a sign that you know them from a past life. This could be someone that you are meant to have a marriage in this lifetime. So you might have some kind of strong reaction emotionally when you see them for the first time. All right, so let me get the dice. Spirit, what can you tell me about pile number three? What is their future spouse's physical appearance? Okay, so we have number three, which again is Gemini energy. We have... Neptune, which is the ruler of Pisces in tropical, and oh, we have Pisces. Okay, so we have some strong Pisces as well energy here. So again, this person could be very romantic looking, very dreamy. Maybe there's a touch of like absent-mindedness about them. And again, I'm definitely getting a strong tendency towards fair complexions here. The eyes especially could be very enchanting, very attractive about them. And with the number three, this person is very independent. They could be self-employed, but that's not, again, directly related to physical traits. But on top of that, the number three can show their arms, their hands are very attractive, you know. Also, their manner of speech, their manner of communication could stand out. Or they could be a person who communicates a lot. And the, all the Mercury energy, by the way, also could be linked to business and could explain all of the pentacles, especially this, the two of pentacles, which shows that this person could have like multiple sources of income. They could be into a business, running a business, or they could be self-employed somehow. And, and or communication could be very important for them on a regular basis. They could be working in some line of work where they communicate on a regular basis and yeah so again could be some kind of teaching or social media or anything like that could also be music by the way all right so let's see some charm spirit what is pile number three future spouse's physical appearance what is pile number three's future spouse's physical appearance Tell me, spirit. Okay, that's enough. All right, so we have, okay, this is a symbol of infinity, the way that I would see it. It makes me think of the Ouroboros, and maybe this is a stretch, but it makes me think of Aquarius and Santa Bishak Nakshatra. Um, makes me think of a doctor, so again, maybe for some of you, this is in the medical field, a person in a medical field. Uh, we have a leaf here. I think this is a leaf. Either it's a leaf or a feather. I think it's a leaf. And a feather. And these things make me think of just someone who is very light on their feet, who likes to travel a lot. So they are, I don't know, like someone who's like always ready to go. You know, they're always on the go. We have multiple feathers here. <laughs> we also have this dot, dot, dot thing with arrows either way so this makes me think that this is someone who is very patient so they have an aura about them that is very patient and energy that um like on the one hand they are patient but on the other hand they're also quite feisty so they have a an energy that maybe they can be um, moody and swinging back and forth but it also makes me think that again this is someone who is difficult to read with a dot 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 and we have this thing over here, which is like, it reminds me of a spice that you use in winter. I don't, I forgot what it's called. An anise? Is it anise? I'm not sure. Any case, um, 
I'm getting spicy, okay? This person might be spicy. We also have the sword twice, which is reinforcing the Knight of Swords energy. So, yeah, I'm getting someone who has, like, hot-bloodedness and, like, someone who has a sharp tongue. Someone who is quite impetuous sometimes. And um, impulsive, potentially, sometimes, even though they try really hard to control themselves. Oh, I've had this one before in a previous pile. This is just a thing that has 1905 written on it. And I did say that it kind of reminds me of... Why is it not focusing? I'm trying to get it to focus, but it will work. Anyway, it kind of reminds me of the key that you write at the beginning of music. So, again, I would say, I would say this as a confirmation that for some of you, this person could be into music. Maybe they're a singer, or they could just have, like, a good voice, or they could be playing an instrument. We have a flower here, which is, like, um, I don't know what it's called in English, but I know the flower. It's like this, um, oh, it's daisies. Yeah, I think daisies. It's basically a simple white flower with just yellow in the middle where the pollen is. Um, so this makes me think of like someone who maybe is really pure, really sunny, um, just very simple, maybe clean cut because we also have the Virgo here. So yeah, someone who like seems like a very put together individual, basically. We have the anchor here, which to me is kind of a confirmation of the emperor and the power. I just think this person comes across as very solid and stable. Someone that you can depend on in a crisis situation. We have the little robot here, which is the funniest part. This, again, is reinforcing the Emperor and Saturn energy because, I mean, Saturn is notorious for being kind of bad at showing emotions and being hyper-controlled and sometimes hyper-controlling. So I think this person is someone who has kind of a poker face and they are very good at controlling their emotions. They don't show emotions easily. They could even be a little bit well repressed as the card suggests. So maybe this repression also spreads to other areas like intimacy and so on, but we'll get into that. And here we just have this thing that kind of looks Asian, like maybe Japanese-y, Chinese-y, I'm not sure. Makes me think of a Japanese garden thing for some reason, or a Shinto temple or something. So, again, this could be that this person is from maybe a different background, could be that. Or, again, maybe they're somehow connected to Japan. I mean, that's very specific. Or China. Um, or maybe they like Asian style fashion. But pretty much it makes me think of like a peaceful Japanese garden for some reason. So it makes me think of something organized, neat, meticulous, controlled. So their physical appearance and their overall aura and demeanor kind of suggest that. We have the death here with like a skull and bones. With, uh, yeah, with, oh, can, this can also signify poison. You know, it's the, the sign that you see on poison cans. Not that I know anything about cans of poison, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so this person, um, again, I'm not going to say they're toxic. I'm, I'm hearing toxic by Britney Spears or something. But um, I don't think they're toxic or anything. It's just that I think they're not particularly friendly. I think they come across as someone who's really tough on the surface, maybe cold or just that people don't know how to deal with them at first. They can, might come across as pretty intimidating. And then last but not least, we have a snowflake. So the snowflake makes me think of two things. Either, again, this person is sensitive, which makes sense with all the Pisces energy and all the moon energy. So I think this just comes across as someone who is quite dreamy and sensitive a lot of the times. Um but or like misunderstood someone who's not easy to understand but it can also literally mean someone who is either fair-skinned very fair-skinned or maybe they have very fair you know hair sorry so maybe even white hair could be a thing okay so this is what i can get from the charms and the dice i'm going to move on to the astrological notes the handwritten ones
All right, so here is my Ziploc bag of transported um, Nakshatra notes. Spirit, tell me for pile number three, who is this person they're going to marry? What is their physical appearance? All right, loads of notes. Let's see some more, Spirit. What can you tell me about pile number three? What is your future spouse's physical appearance, Spirit? What is pile number three's future spouse's physical appearance? Tell me. All right, I think that's enough. That's more than enough. There's loads of notes here. So let me start. We have Maga Nakshatra, which falls in Leo, is ruled by Ketu. So we have some Ketu, like we have here. We have Purva Falguni, which is ruled by Venus. We have Jeshta, which is ruled by Mercury, which falls in Scorpio. We have Danishta, which falls in Capricorn and Aquarius and is ruled by Mars. We have Vishaka, which is ruled by Jupiter. We have Barani, which is ruled by Venus. Um, by the way, in case you think there are many of them, there's 27 nakshatras, so yeah. We have Pusha, which is ruled by Saturn, so we do have the Saturn going on. We have Ardra, ruled by Rahu. Purva Bhadrapada, ruled by Jupiter. Okay, uh, let me get more nakshatras. Some of them are probably going to repeat. We have Swati, which is ruled by Rahu. We have Danishta again, which is ruled by Mars. We have Ashlesha, which is ruled by Mercury. Mula, which is ruled by K2. So we have a lot of K2 going on. We have Kritika, which is ruled by the Sun. Jeshta again, which is ruled by Mercury, like I said. We have Ardra again. I think Ardra came out, didn't it? Yeah, Ardra came out again. All right. So this person is really intense. We have Chitra, which is ruled by Mars. And we have Uttara Bhadrapada, which is ruled by Saturn. So we have two of the three Saturn ruled nakshatras. We have Uttara Shadha, which is ruled by the sun. So we have some hefty amount of sun energy as well. And let's see, we have Barani, which is ruled by Venus. Didn't we also have Barani again? Yeah, so we have Barani twice. All right, so we have Barani twice, Ardra twice, um, Danishta twice. And I think that's it. We have these three, which came out twice. All right, so let's see what else. We have mars energy not surprising because we have so much mars i mean we have danishta twice which is ruled by mars we have mercury as well which also came out strongly because we also have the virgo gemini that came through and then we have ardra twice which falls in gemini and we also have those other nakshatras like oh we have jeshta twice which is also ruled by mercury so yeah loads of mercury energy and we have sagittarius all right so Obviously, not all of these are going to apply to every single one of you. It's probably going to be a combination of different things. But I'm going to try to go over a lot of stuff, okay, of what these things could signify. So Ardra in Gemini, first of all, we have Ardra twice and we have Purva Bhadrapada. So this clearly shows that this person actually has a very intense energy, um, probably has a very rich inner life. And because we have these colder energies like i said previously that show a poker face and everything this is probably um, a person who is very good at hiding the intensity of their emotion so people might get like slight hints of what is going on under the surface but most likely they have a very rich inner world that they don't allow others to know of not without a lot of vetting going on so with Purva Bajapada, this is going to actually show that the person might be two-faced in some way. And again, I don't want to say psycho or like, uh, you know, I don't know, narcissistic or anything. It's just that 
maybe there's a side to them that you wouldn't think existed because it's so paradoxical to how they present themselves on a regular basis. Um, with Porva Bajapada, there's kind of like a dark sexiness about them, and this could show in the way, well, everything that they do and the, their overall energy. So they could, this definitely this person could be attractive, and to the opposite sex, I mean, I, I think especially if you're interested in a man, this is someone who's definitely very attractive, all right? Not saying that as a woman they're not going to be attractive, but especially if, they, if they're a man, because there's a lot of, um, I mean, there, it's not just that there's a lot of masculine energy, but there's a lot of these uh, nakshatras that you often see in very desirable men, you know, a lot of sun energy, a lot of Mars energy, okay? So, um, we also have um, Kritika, and we also have Udra Shadha, so these are very masculine energies, and also Jyeshta. If this is a woman, I mean, irrespective, actually, of their gender, they're someone who is physically attractive, I would say, above average, most likely. But, like I said, if they're a man, they're particularly attractive. And with Purva Bajapada, I mean, to be fair, worst case scenario, you could be looking at toxic masculinity, worst case scenario, but let's not go there. Um, let, let me just stick to uh, physical characteristics as much as I can. So, um, this person will have... For many of you, a strong features, especially a squarish jawline, or at least a wide jawline. They could have facial hair. It's not a necessity, but even if they don't have facial hair, again, something about their appearance could be really masculine. Um, especially if this is a man, and I stress this, obviously. If this is a woman, you could actually see similar features in the sense that they will have, um, again, strong jawlines is a thing. They could tend to have, like, squarish faces as well, like a square-shaped square shape jaw, a square-shaped face. Um, they could have a very beautiful body, irrespective of their gender, again, because we have Danishta twice. Danishta is known to be quite sexy. That's connected to sexuality. It's also connected to things like weapons and military, as well as Kritika, actually. So, again, see how this resonates? For some of you, maybe this person is going to be wearing a, a uniform because maybe they're involved with um, defense or the police or something like that. Or any kind of line of work where they have to deal with weapons. It could also be that, of course, they could also be engineers of any kind. Um, but let me not get into careers. So, they will have a strong physique. Most likely, they will have well-developed muscle mass quite athletic. Um, they probably also are going to be interested in staying physically active and fit. So yeah, also with the Kritika, you might see uh, a very bright eyes, a bright appearance in general. So someone who easily attracts attention. I definitely see this person attracting a lot of attention because we also have Magha, we have Swati, we have Kritika. We have Danishta. So basically, Maga and Danishta, for instance, they are two of the main, actually, the I would say the two main nakshatras that are connected to fame. So this person, like I said, I mean, you saw this from the beginning with the emperor. Like I said, they could have a high status in their line of work, especially that gives them a lot of visibility, you know, a certain seniority or something. So, yeah, they could have, like, a high visibility. They could be very, um, also very attractive, you know, because of their, not, it's like, uh, it's like they are attractive anyway, but their status makes them even more attractive in a way. Um, we have Ashlesha, and so I have said this in my astrology channel, for instance, that Purva Bhadrapada is, like, a darker version of Ashlesha. Both of them are kind of known to be sensuous and sexual. It's just that Purva Bhadrapada has like a hint of danger about them. And there's something of a touch wild and untamed about these energies. So yeah, just to give you some examples of actors who have Purva Bhadrapada. Um, let me start with, who should I start with? Let me think. Oh, Jodie Comer, who plays Villanelle, has son in Purva Bajrapada. 
Um, Grimes, the singer, also has some significant Puro Bhadrapada energy. Um, I think the sun, she ha I think she might have sun in Puro Bhadrapada, but or at least to one of the other planets in her horoscope. Rachel Weiss also has Sun in Purva Vajrapada. Catherine Zeta-Jones has Moon in Purva Vajrapada. Machine Gun Kelly has Moon in Purva Vajrapada. So it tends to be like a pretty dark sort of energy. Um, also, the guy who played Walter White in Breaking Bad, I think Brian Cranston, also has Sun in Purva Vajrapada. <laughs> So there's like a, a hint of danger about them, but it also makes them interesting and attractive. And with Ardra, Ardras also are, can be also Jodie Comer has both Ardra and Purva Bhadrapada in her chart. And Ardras are kind of, again, known to be wild and untamed. They're, and there's kind of like a connection between these two nakshatras, actually, Ardra and Purva Bhadrapada through their symbolisms and the deities that are ruled them in Vedic astrology, but I won't get into that. And uh, they're both kind of known to be wild and untamed, and Ardra especially is connected to animals, but both of them could be connected to animals. So there's kind of like this wild, untamed energy about this person. Um, again, another famous actor who had a lot of Ardra was Rudol Valentina, who was the first male sex symbol who had Mars conjunct Jupiter in Ardra. Um, Taylor Swift also has, I think, Moon in Ardra. Um, what's her name? Gladstone? Lily Gladstone? I'm not 100% sure that's her name. The actress who played alongside Leo DiCaprio in Killers of the Flower Moon, also Moon in Ardra. So, in any case, this nakshatra is notorious for, um, being very nature-loving, and also having an air of unpredictability about them and having very expressive eyes and um, also having very intense emotions that they can be good at keeping hidden up until, you know, they blow up. Um, we also have Barani coming out twice and Barani is very much connected to, again, kind of a darkness. I mean, both Barani and Purva Bhadrapad are connected to funerals and death. So Barney explains why there's so many sad cards here in the tarot, like I said. Um, so this could be someone who really looks like they have gone through rough times. Like there could be something in their overall aura and the way they carry themselves and maybe even their physical appearance, their features. That just shows they have had a hard life, you know, have gone through a lot of challenges. And Barani is literally called the bearer translation. And um, it's about bearing grudges. It's one of the, the things that it's famous for. So it could be like this person is someone who holds a lot of grudges, who knows, again, you don't want to mess with them if they have a lot of Barani energy. Um, and um, there's a, an air of inertia about Barani, like a heaviness to them, you know, um, just to give you some examples again, so this could be like sometimes they will have droopy eyes or they will have eyes that are downward sloping, um, or they could be just having, a, a, another thing is they could have physically strong bodies, like a heaviness, physical heaviness to their bodies. Um, they can also tend to have deep voices. And just to give you an example, actually, Greta Garbo had Moon and Barani, um, Nakshatra, and I mentioned this in the other piles because Barani came out in other piles as well. Um, but I think you're the only one who got, the, got it twice. Um, I mentioned this actor, Pablo something, who acted in The Last of Us. And he also acted in Game of Thrones. And um, he also has strong Barani energy. Jordan Peterson also has Ascendant, I think. Wait, no, I'm not, I don't know if he has Ascendant in Barney. I think he has Ascendant in Critica. Oh, yeah. Jordan Peterson is a good example for Critica. Critica. <laughs> um, in any case, Barney, though. Antonio Banderas, I'm pretty sure, has Moon in Barney. Halle Berry has Ascendant in Barney. Uh, Vivian Lee had Ascendant in Barney. Um, Lana Del Rey has... Venus and Rahu conjunct in Barani. Grimes also has Venus and Barani. So a lot of um, actors, singers, whatever, that have this kind of like melancholic energy, kind of a dark brooding energy, have a lot of Barani 
in their horoscope. So this could be the kind of energy that this person has for you. Um, also, Edgar Casey and um, Edgar Casey and what's his name? Um, right, Carl Jung also has had some Barney energies. Just to give you some more examples. Giesta is a strong confirmation that really, again, not directly linked to physical appearance, but this person could be self-employed because we have Giesta twice. And in fact, you're the only pile who got Giesta at all. And um, this nakshatra is very much connected to being self-made and yeah, being independent. And also it, it literally translates as the eldest, most excellent so again, it confirms what the tarot cards say, that this is someone of status. Someone who has worked hard and has like, you know, moved through the ranks through their own efforts. And Giesta, of course, also has the Scorpio energy. So this person could have like um, really intense eyes. They could also have a kind of agitated energy. They could have an agitated energy. Giesta is known for sleeping problems, for instance. So, yeah, I'm not, not, not saying that they're going to necessarily have sleeping problems, but it could be something intense, agitated, mistrustful, like someone who doesn't easily trust, and definitely someone who's hidden, you know, and someone who likes to keep people at arm's length because it makes them feel more secure. They tend to be very secretive, so difficult to read. That's definitely being confirmed. I can't think of anyone who has Giesta energy. I know Catherine Zeta-Jones has Ascendant in Giesta. Um, Emma Watson has Giesta, I think, Moon. And Rosalia, the Spanish singer, has Ascendant in Giesta as well, as far as I remember. So a lot of actually Giesta is connected to the deer slash hair. So I actually see a lot of like doe eyes literally with Giesta, especially in women. Um, with men, it's more about intensity and competitiveness, actually. I know that Mozart also had Giesta. I think he had Giesta Moon, actually. Yeah. Anyway. So a, a strong, intense energy and also could be like a strong nose, maybe doe eyes in some situations, but you would have to check other indicators for that. And again, this is a pretty general reading. So this is why I'm giving you all the potential combinations I see here. Um, with Ashlesha, like I said, with Ashlesha and Purva Bajapara, this person could be really seductive. They could also be someone who looked graceful physically, like they look like they could be good at dancing or maybe they like dancing. Um, their eyes particularly could be hypnotic and attractive. And yeah, square jawline is definitely very strong here. It's a strong indicator, especially if this is a man, like I said. Um, like with Uttara Shadha, um, just to give you some example, Brad examples, Brad Pitt and George Clooney have moon in Uttara Shadha. Teal Swan has moon in Uttara Shadha. Um, what was her name? Kate Bush also has moon in Uttara Shadha. So, um, a lot of people that are quite prideful and like, <laughs> yeah, especially in men, I mentioned this, Kritika and Uttara Shadha tends to make men really attractive in the eyes of women because they come across as like typically masculine, traditional and all that. But the downside is they can be very aggressive, stubborn, possessive and potentially toxically masculine. But I won't get into that. <laughs> um, yeah, Kritika as well. Um, I can't think of like examples of Kritika right now. But trust me, like, if you would see a man with Kritika placements, generally, these are the kinds of men that a lot of women go gaga for. Uh, I've seen it in real life a lot. Um, just to give you an example, let me think. Uh, a the actor who played Agador in Yentl is Moon in Kritika. I don't remember his name. Um, and I know that a lot of women had a crush on him just because of that movie. Other men with Moon and Kritika, I can't really think, or Sun or anything. 
I know Jamie Oliver also has, I think, Sun and Critica. But yeah. Oh, and with Critica, this person could have like a reddish complexion or they could have red hair as well. Or they could look good with red hair. And with Chitra, especially if it falls in Virgo, because you did also have Virgo, this person could be um, quite controlling of their... Um, of their how should I put it? They can be very well groomed, you know, so they they can pay attention to the way that they dress themselves and they might also like to wear jewelry. And with Jieshta, they might be wearing something that has a spiritual meaning, some kind of piece of jewelry or accessory that has some kind of a meaning to them religiously or otherwise. Yeah, I'm seeing this person has really intense eyes. Can I just say this? Really intense. And they have an air of competitiveness about them. Maybe a slight aggression as well. And oh, and you also have Purva Falguni here. So they could have a, like a beauty spot. A lot of very attractive actors like Purva Falguni is literally also known as the sign of the, the nakshatra of the courtesan. So a lot of very seductive people have heavy Purva Falguni energy. Madonna has moon and ascendant and she used to be very seductive and she also has a beauty mark. Marilyn Monroe also has had moon in Purva Falguni in the Navamsha. Um, Michael Fassbender has moon in Purva Falguni. Charlize Theron also has significant Purva Falguni. I think ascendant and the sun. I'm not sure. Maybe more than... Definitely the Ascendant, okay? So, a lot of people who are very good-looking in a very kind of seductive way have a lot of Purva Falguni. So, oh my god, this person definitely is really attractive. Can I just say this? Pile number three. Um, like I said, especially if this is a man, because there's a lot of, like, masculine energy here. So, yeah. But even if this is a woman, of course, she will still be attractive. And anything in between, you know what I mean? Um, all right, so this is pretty much what I get from the astrological notes. So I'm going to move on to the last stage, which is handwritten notes about actual physical characteristics. Oh, I just wanted to say before I get into it, because I remembered when I gathered all the notes that I didn't say anything about Mars and Mercury, which also came out in Sagittarius. So I just wanted to say that Mars and Mercury further reinforce the things that I've said pri previously, uh, that this person has a strong muscle mass, is probably quite athletic, and um, they probably have nice teeth and a nice smile as well, a tendency towards having an oval face. A lot of masculine energy, like I said, a lot of agitation, and also Mercury will tend to point towards a face shape that is like an inverted triangle, and... Um, also the hands, arms, and communication style, also hands, arms, and shoulders actually could be really attractive, and their communication style could also stand out, and maybe their voice as well. All right, so let me get straight into the, um, direct notes about their physical appearance. Spirit, what can you tell me for pile number three? What is their spouse's physical appearance? What are their future spouses physical appearance spirit? Tell me. Man, they barely want to come out. Alright, spirit, what can you tell me for pile number three? Future spouse. What does this person look like? What does this person look like, spirit? What does pile number three's person look like? Okay, this one wants to come out as well. Nope. Okay. We have brown hair. We have freckles. We have chin dimple. We have dyed hair. We have serious <laughs> confirmation of what I said previously. We have high cheekbones. Okay, tall. 
medium build, nose bump, slim build, gray or white hair, glasses, melancholic or serious expression, yeah, confirmations upon confirmations. We have round eyes, hooded eyes, so strong confirmation of what I said, especially with the K2 energy. We have blue or gray eyes, chin dimple came out twice or three times already, dark tan skin, classic or elegant style, again, confirmation of what I said with all the Saturn energy. Almond-shaped eyes, which is similar to hooded. Uh, nose bump came twice. Gray or white hair came twice. Yeah, so this makes sense with all the Saturn energy because for many of you, this person could be quite uh, mature in age. We also have full lips. We have raspy voice. Hooded eyes coming out twice. We have black eyes. We have brown eyes. We have sporty casual style. Facial hair. Okay, confirmation of what I said. We have straight hair. We have broad shoulders. Okay, makes sense with all the sun energy and uh, the mars as well we have medium tan skin we have medium tan skin yeah and all of the others i have opened okay so this is pretty much what i have for you pile, pile number three and i hope that you have enjoyed it and if you have don't forget to like the video subscribe to my channel click on the notifications bell if you want to be notified when i post a new tarot reading also, comment in the comment section with any feedback you would like to give or ideas for future topics you would like me to cover. And if you're interested in supporting my channel further, you can click on the join button under any of my videos and subscribe to pay a small monthly fee in exchange for some perks, which are detailed if you click on the join button. Also, if you're interested in getting a private tarot reading, you can check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there. I have also left a link to reviews. I have gotten four private readings before in case you're interested to see them. And also, last but not least, I have an astrology channel, which I will also link in the video description. I focus mainly on Vedic astrology, but I have more than 20 years experience in reading in both in tropical and Vedic astrology actually um actually more than 10 years in Vedic and about 20 years ago starting in tropical but I mostly focus on Vedic astrology right now I just use my tropical astrology insights every now and then so if you're interested in my astrology channel go ahead and check it out maybe subscribe I would greatly appreciate it thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you at my next tarot reading bye